had enough confidence that they would just go on and run it down our throat and get us out of the ball game early. And right off the bat, we make a big recovery on a fumble. Uh, unfortunately, right then, we couldn't get the ball into the end zone for six, and we had to settle for three. But uh, even then, we were in great shape. Clay Griffin made the hit. Jeff Thomas makes the recovery. There are two guys you're counting on up front. Well, they have to play. They have to play well. And uh, unfortunately, uh, as a game, uh, went on down uh, the size difference uh, took its toll on all of our defensive front people in including our linebackers three plays later keegan ray uh, connects on a 38-yard field goal and you're up three nothing and we're in good shape you know and we turn right back around and uh, we kick it off to him we do a good job on it uh, he knocks it out of the end zone and we turn right back around and intercept the ball and we take it back in for a touchdown uh, mario kelso makes a great break on the ball and takes it in and what we were hoping is that they would start having some doubts if they were behind. And they did a little and, bit. Uh, they had some, but unfortunately, the fourth possession, fifth possession that we we uh, we got, we couldn't we couldn't capitalize on that, and uh, unfortunately, we couldn't get them out far enough so that they could really have some doubts. After Kelso's touchdown, the Raiders led by a score of ten to nothing, and that was with about three minutes gone in the football game. The uh, next time that uh, Illinois got the football, they brought it out to the 37. After a couple of plays, Rocky Harvey took took it 48 yards, and, and got, they got back in the game immediately because they've got two quality tailbacks they can throw at you. Well, you know, they should have. They're in the Big Ten, and uh, they've got to have good quality tailbacks, but we made them a little bit better than what they were. Uh, he creases us on a, on a, on a run there, and we, we didn't do a good job of running the lanes that we should run. I don't have the liberty of seeing the film before we do this show, but... I pretty well know what happened is our free didn't get over and our corner didn't come up and squeeze it inside. So uh, they make a big run, they get right back in the ballgame. One of the things we noticed after Illinois came back to cut it to 10 to 7 was that, boy, the kick return game, the kick coverage game, something that, that you talked about after last week's game at Tennessee State and Celicio Sanford said that you really emphasized yeah. in practice this week. Boy, that practice yeah. paid off immediately when Celicio brought it back a school record, yeah. 99 yards. I didn't realize it was a record, but I knew that he had brought it back awfully, uh, awfully long way. And when they made the announcement, it was 99 yards. I thought the blocking, I thought everything that we did was, was right on that. And that was a big lift for us. Again, now it takes us back to where we go up 20 to 7. And uh, unfortunately, we're dealing uh, right there. We're going to have to get a lot more points. And ironically, uh, it, it seemed from where I was staying that Torn Curtsy threw the key block for him. I don't know, you know, uh, again, I, I don't really know. I know that Torn leads him on mm -hmm. that because it's either or, either uh, Torn gets the ball or Silesio calls for the ball, and in this case, it was Silesio. After uh, Silesio gets it and goes for the 98-yard kickoff return, Darrell Love then makes a, a nice break on, on what was, frankly, a poorly thrown football. Well, you know, I don't think they throw the football exceptionally well, Tip. Uh, I'm going to be honest about that. I do think they run it a lot better, uh, but I think they also know that they're not going to win many games just running the football. They're going to have to throw it some. And we were fortunate enough we were in the right place uh, at the right time and we made some breaks. You were able to get uh, three points out of it. But the, in one of the key plays in this field goal drive was West Counts hit Silesio Sanford for a big first down. He makes a big first down, and we were going for it on fourth down. And in doggone it, we jumped off sides. Right. Uh, because I didn't think 20 points was going to be enough uh, to beat a Big Ten scoop. And when we jumped off sides, and we had to have a penalty of five additional yards, and we went on to kick the field goal. And I thought Keith and Ray kicked both of them well. Field goal makes it 20 to 7. And as we worked our way toward the end of the first quarter, your defense comes up big. When uh, Steve Havard, uh, the big tailback, I call him big and small, Havard the big one, Harvey the small quick one, they, uh, he goes 13 yards for a first down, 11 yards for a first down, 19 yards for a first down, but they get it fourth and one down close, and boy, your defense really swells up. Great goal line stand. It was, uh, and that should be a really a, a great positive for our football team. Uh, there's no way in the world that you should be able to stop it that close to the goal line, and we did. We, uh, we ran our feet pretty good, and we got through those people pretty good, and we wrapped him up, and we put him on the ground. It was a big play for us. The second quarter was the Rocky Harvey picture show as he uh, took it in for a couple of touchdowns. And uh, Illinois turned the tables on you in a sense that they turned the football game into a 50-yard game because they, they got the football on the plus side of the 50 every time in the, in the second quarter. And they kept it. We yeah. couldn't get out. We couldn't, we couldn't get any kind of drive going whatsoever offensively, none. And, uh, and we wasn't able to get anything. Uh, if we could have, as many turnovers as we were able to get, 
during the course of the ball game, they were enough if we could do something consistently offensively. At any time they control your offensive front and your defensive front. Uh, not a lot you can do. I tell you, a total of uh, six turnovers in the football game that you got four uh, interceptions and two fumble recoveries. And, uh, and from a coaching standpoint, those those interceptions, that's something that you've been looking to happen. Uh, well, you know, uh, you have to have it. Yeah. There's no question. And I told our football team after the game, we're a lot better football team than what this score indicates and also what this game indicates. We gave them way too many creases to run in. But we did the same thing last week in the passing game at Tennessee State. So there's a lot of things we're going to have to improve on. But we've got the personnel that we can get their attitudes back and, and go back to work next week. I, I think we'll be okay. Well, after Havard and Harvey scored touchdowns in the second quarter, Illinois goes to the locker room with a 21-20 lead. We'll be back to take a look at the second half right after this. In Payne, Illinois, where Coach Donnelly and I are joined by thousands of the creatures of the night following Illinois' victory over the Blue Raiders. But, Coach, you started the second half. You got the ball first, down one. I know you really wanted something good to happen in that first possession. Well, I don't think there's any question that if we didn't get something going then, we were really going to be in some problems. And as it worked out, we didn't get anything going, and we stayed in problems all night. Uh, in the second half, we're down by one. All we have to do is put something together. Uh, we just wasn't able, we were just not physically able to do that. The first possession for the Raiders ended up in a punt. Uh, Illinois gets the football. Uh, they go to Havard for a couple of uh, carries. One of those uh, went for a loss because Keith Paldo and Martez Phelps, I mean, absolutely uh, uh, knocked him backwards when they hit him in the, in the, in the backfield. Well, you know, we've had some people, uh, we had some people play reasonably well. I'm going to be anxious to get back home. It's going to be a long drive back and to see the film because we again we gave way too many creases and we didn't get anybody there uh, from the backside and i don't know where all of these people were going uh, so we're going to have to find that out hextra hits dean on a 37 yard pass play down to the one and you almost held again well you can't leave it on the one yard line and not have a team as uh, as big as they are punch the thing in and we made a couple of good plays but we you just have to keep on fighting and fighting and fighting. And sooner or later, the dam will, will burst if, if you don't do something with it on the offensive side. Hextra's uh, bootleg uh, run makes it 28-20, uh, to 20, Illinois uh, leading over Middle Tennessee, and that uh, came after a five-play, 42-yard drive. Next, Middle Tennessee possession ends in a punt. You force Illinois to a punt. Then the Raiders get it back. You insert Gabe Alanese at quarterback, and uh, he looked pretty good in that possession, uh, connecting on four straight. Uh, Gary Davis uh, caught two of them for seven yards apiece. Alicio Sanford, one for four. And then Trey Hurd catches a middle screen and actually loses a couple of yeah. yards when they really read what was happening. Yeah, they, they read what we refer to as a jailbreak uh, inside linebacker jumped on. Uh, you know, we, we took uh, West Counts out, and I wasn't displeased with the way West was playing. And uh, to just go ahead and get Gabe some, uh, some playing time, and also we came back in with Jimbo, rose up. Uh, to get them some playing time because I think it's important. We got a lot of football games down the road to play, and we're going to have to establish ourselves with who is going to be our quarterback. But uh, as long as you're not being able to do anything consistently up front uh, by controlling the line of scrimmage with your people, as opposed to those uh, uh, players that they have, then you're not going to look very good at quarterback. That uh, possession, however, was the was the beginning of of uh, trying to get ourselves out of a little hole field position wise because we did click off a couple of first downs well we got a couple but we didn't get enough and uh, unfortunately uh, coming into this ball game that was the biggest fear i had would we be able to, to get some type uh, movement up front against their large large people and they're really good football players at linebacker late in the third quarter uh illinois ups the lead to 35 to 20 when uh, havard the big tailback uh, leaps over a couple of people, goes straight up the middle, and they, and they did a good job sealing that off. Well, there's no, uh, uh, there's, we can say what we want to, there's no reason for that. Absolutely no reason for us to give that many long runs, uh, none whatsoever. And again, I'm going to be anxious to take a look at the film and see exactly what, what really took place. At 35 to 20, we moved into the fourth quarter, and once again, uh, you, you got a little something going here and there uh, with uh, Alanese hitting Gary Davis for 14 yards, and then you got the little freshman or the big freshman Kendall Newson in for uh, for a catch. But we wanted to make sure we got the young guys in as many snaps as we possibly can because, as I, as I stated earlier, 
we got a long way to go. And these young guys are going to be good players, and Newsom likes to play, and he's very competitive. And, and I thought uh, Hampton Johnson caught the ball on the boundary late in the ball game. That's going to really help him down the road. He also uh, ran into a wall of uh, blue-shirted Illini on a reverse. Well, you know, that's the thing that's a little bit disappointing. Yeah. He's got better feet. Only one guy took him down. Uh, he's got better feet to avoid one tackler. And I think that now that he is running, that he can get his eyes up and he can see some things a little bit quicker. We're going to have to do a better job of missing tackling. Uh, Keith Dollar got you a fumble tonight when uh, when uh, Rocky Harvey fumbled it. And they got your offense in gear again. And this time you have Jimbo Rosar and Kelvarek Green in the backfield. Once again, you're getting reps for those guys, and once, possibly for teaching purposes, because the game somewhat getting out of hand. Well, it was out of hand. And it wasn't any way that we were going to catch up uh, considering what we were doing offensively with the football. And we weren't going to be able to get the ball back very quickly on the defensive side because all they wanted to do from that point on was run the clock out. And we were able to play all of those people. Kelbeck Green should be playing a lot of football because he's a good player. Uh, punt coverage uh, late in the game uh, in particular, uh, after that particular possession we're talking about, Isaiah Brown got down the field on a punt and uh, absolutely leveled a guy for a negative punt return. I thought both of our sprinters, our outside sprinters, uh, I thought they did a great job. Again, we'll have to go back and watch the film and see exactly what's going on uh, with the inside people. But overall, I was pleased. Rocky Harvey scores another touchdown. He had about 200 yards rushing in the football game. They had an 88-yard play, six, or 88 yard six play drive to go up 42 to 20. Then they score their final touchdown. Uh, when unfortunately Jimbo Rosar hits a guy on the boundary and, and it's wide open. Well, Jimbo should have thrown the ball. Right. We had no choice. We got to make something happen, and Jimbo threw it out there, and the guy makes a great break, break on the ball and took it down the boundary. So 48 to 20 is the final score as Illinois scores late in the football game, and the Raiders' record drops to one and one. We'll go to the Raider locker room, talk to some of the players, and we'll have more with Coach Donnelly as we continue right after this. So much bigger than anything we'll probably see all season, and. Uh, Defensive back-wise, they uh, real physical up front, off the line. They put jammed our receivers early and uh, knocked them off the routes. No, I think we have a pretty good team. We just, you know, kind of died down at the end. The numbers kind of got you. Yeah, the numbers kind of got us also. You know, we just had to keep pushing. And just Coach told us in, at halftime, you know, we just keep going. And we just kind of, we just didn't, just didn't get the job done tonight. We just worked hard, you know, it was just a, it's just a normal week for us, you know, we work hard every week, our coaches make sure we, you know, we playing up to our ability, you know, and, and we did the first half, we played as hard as we could. Tonight you got a big interception, went in for a touchdown, kind of tell us about what happened. I uh, was just in the check three coverage and, uh, you know, I broke on the ball, pretty good play, you know, but, you know it was, helped us score some points, so, you know, that's all I want to do is help the team. You're a big play guy, this was a big play game and uh, it had to be fun out there to play in this atmosphere. Yes, it was. You know, we had a, you know, a great crowd here, you know, fighting for the team, pulling for them and everything. They owned 18 past 18 games, and they got the win on us, you know, but we kind of just we didn't work the way we should the offensively. You know, we didn't get the ball in the end zone tonight. Tell me about, the, about your return tonight. I'll tell you, your buddy, Torn Curtsy, I think, threw the block that sprung it. Yeah, he told, he told me seeing the guy coming, you know, at that point in time, and he told me, after, you know, at the end of the game, he told me we talked about it a little bit, and we just, we had worked so hard on it all, we were trying to get the right man picked up and hit the crease where it needs to be hit at, and you know, we almost broke two of them tonight. We got a chance to be awfully good one a few years down the road, uh, maybe this season, uh, that a lot of people can maybe stop at asking questions about whether MTSU ought to go 1A or not. And uh, I think we proved to a lot of people that we can we can play with this caliber of people. You've always wanted to be a starter. Tonight you got that shot. That had to be fun. Yeah, it was. It wasn't much pretty more. Pretty much known it all week. Is that... Yeah, it, that was a, a different. You know, last week I, I didn't practice at all. I stood back there and watched. This week I got to practice. And, uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun. Well, you heard some of the guys in the locker room after the game, and Coach, there's no doubt about it in their minds. They, they felt like they were ready to play when they came up here, but uh, once they got out there and some heat got on them, they just didn't necessarily do it for as long as they wanted to do it. Well, that a lot of times is, is the case. You know, you have great intentions, and when you get out there, you find out that if you don't do the preparation and if you don't give the opponent uh, their just dues, those guys are pretty good. Mm -hmm. And coming into this league, coming into an... Uh, uh, 
uh, Big Ten. Those guys are, are, are an amazing athletes. They're huge. Uh, they've got a lot of bark on them, got a lot of game experience under the belt, and they were determined they were going to win. Uh, we were determined earlier that we were going to win, and unfortunately, we gave them some big breaks and we couldn't catch up. A couple of comments we want to get from you on a couple of things that happened in the football game. Mario Kelso, uh, first collegiate uh, interception. Uh, this is the first of what I think you feel like will be a stellar career for that young man. Mario likes to play. Mario uh, enjoys playing. Mario has no fear. Uh, what he has to do now is take a great deal of snaps and learn how to play the game. He made a great break on that one and, get, and really gave us a shot in the arm. And what he has to do is build off of that and continue to do that. And speaking of interception, Cedric Stegall got the 10th of his career, and he is a guy who has steadily gotten better, and now he's a senior and he's got to play. Well, you know, all seniors have to play. All seniors have to lead, and I was really pleased. He had a chance for another one and uh, let that one get away down in the end zone. But he made a great break on this one and brought this ball back a little bit away. So uh, I'm really pleased with the way, particularly all four of the interceptions that we were able to get. Don't you get Gabe Alanese in there, his first action as a as an active quarterback for the Raiders. He's got to get his feet under him and get to play him. I think Gabe's going to be a good player, Chip. I think it's a matter of him getting his feet under him. And I think it's a matter of uh, Gabe deciding that he wants to uh, put forth all of the effort that's going to require him in order to be a quality football player, and particularly quarterback. I was pleased with the way uh, he operated some of the things that he did. You know, I think he threw, what, four in a row right. and completed those. And that's got to help Gabe. Uh, that has to get him... Looking forward to coming back to practice Monday and trying to get better and compete for quarterback position. And on the downside, uh, one streak that came to an end other than Illinois' 18-game losing streak, Matt Lowe's 24-game streak of catching passes came to an end, but he came close to getting a couple of them. We'll take a break. Be back to wrap things up with the coach right after this. You've been watching the Daily News Journal scoreboard brought to you by the Daily News Journal, your news every day. And Coach, uh, not only did the Raiders fall uh, against a big opponent in uh, Illinois, one of your opponents a couple of weeks down the road, Eastern Kentucky, had a tough time with the Kentucky Wildcats. You know, I hadn't heard any yeah. scores, Chip. And uh, truthfully, you know, we played Eastern Kentucky uh, two or three weeks down the road. I'll, I'll let Roy worry about Eastern. <laughs> and I got my hands full of my football team. Well, Jacksonville is the next one up on the schedule. They uh, lost at Georgia Southern, uh, but in the friendly confines of uh, Snow Stadium in Jacksonville, Alabama, they can be awfully good. History-wise, uh, they've always been good there. Uh, they play exceptionally well at home, and I'm sure that they're looking forward to getting back home uh, and playing Middle Tennessee at their place. It's going to be an awfully tough football game for us. New coach there a year ago. Tennessee travels to Jacksonville, and Coach, uh, the Gamecocks under Mike Williams, second-year uh, man there, and he's uh, tried to build that team bigger, faster, stronger. Is something he's been preaching there. You know, they're a lot better football team than they were last year. Uh, Chip, they brought in a lot of uh, drop-downs, and they dro brought in a lot of junior college players, and they all seem to be playing with a great deal of unity. And uh, I was impressed with their football team. You hit the field yesterday in, uh, at Snow Stadium, a good crowd of Raider fans on hand, including the cheerleaders and band, of course, and Keegan Ray kicks things off to start the football game. We started it off and we missed the, uh, missed the placement where we want the football, and I thought we came in here with Kelso uh, making a great stick there, coming in from the backside, and we got good field position. We got him inside the 30-yard line where we wanted him. Montressa Kirby is their quarterback. He's out of nearby Anniston, Alabama, and uh, he gives you a run pass threat. Well, you know, we missed the contain on the backside. We should make that play. We should make that play every day. That's not a hard play to make, and we miss it. And we give him a big run here, and here again he comes back, cuts back against the grain on the option game, which is not a big play to, to defend, and, and makes a heck of a run right here. He's a good threat. There's no question throwing in, running the football. Joey Hamilton will be on the receiving end of this uh, Kirby aerial. And right there's Charlie Walker on the spot to make the stop. Well, you know, he can throw the football, and they can catch the football. Uh, here again, they come out with uh, two wides plus a tight end with a trip set, and they toss the ball to the tight end. Uh, 
mistake here. They, uh, if this is a lateral here, this ball is live. If we can get to it quick enough, uh, we can do something with it. But and then again, I was proud of the way that we intercepted this ball. I stayed in there and brought it back, but we're losing field position all the time here. We're giving teams three and four and five first downs before we wake up a little bit and decide to start stopping some people. So let's take a look at the Raiders' first offensive possession. It will be Torn Curtsy uh, taking it up the middle, and, and, and you, you ran him uh, early in the football game, and, and I think you expected to have some success offensively. Well, I thought we would have success offensively, uh, Chip. Uh, there was no reason for us not to. We just did not play as well as we were play capable of playing on the offensive side of the ball, and that's a puzzle right now. And for the second straight week, uh, Wes Counts gets the started quarterback, and you, you saw him uh, hit Curtsy over the middle. Well, you know, Wes is, uh, uh, he's doing what he's capable of doing right now. And every snap that he takes, he gets a little bit better. Here, they, uh, they defended well. You've got to give Jacksonville uh, credit. They knew that we're not going to throw the ball and beat anybody uh, consistently with it. We're going to have to run the football, and we're going to have to throw the short game. I thought our kick coverage game was excellent. Yeah. Uh, Could not have been really better. Cannot, has been that way for two weeks now, and I was really pleased with it. So uh, w the punt on Jacksonville's possession uh, gave them a shot at a field goal, which they missed, and the Raiders uh, get the football back again. Counts hits Celicio Sanford on the near sideline for six yards and uh, giving you a little bit better position. Uh, but there was a penalty for an offensive face masking. That's what they called on us, and uh, we're going to have to do a better job of keeping our hands inside and blocking the people. So out of the hole there, Counts hits Trey Hurd for 13 yards and a first down. Here's Torn Curtsy running over the left side. Loss of one yard, they had good pursuit. They, you know, they run through the football well, and we don't have enough hat to put on the linebackers, and he runs through it and makes a good stick. Into the second quarter, as the sun pops out, it had rained before the game. The field was a little bit slick, but boy, did it get muggy. His counts there rushes up the middle for three yards. You know, we do not protect him well enough, particularly on the left side. Uh, they kept giving us pressure outside. And he had to step up in the pocket. He's just going to have to learn to pull that ball down and find him a seam and take what he can take. After one quarter, it seemed that the defenses were going to dominate this game. I didn't think there was any question there. I was still disappointed that we weren't playing as well offensively as we are capable of playing. And then again, uh, maybe, you know, uh, maybe that's what we have to do now. We're going to have to start going back to running the football and controlling the clock and uh, taking what they can give us. Pass over the middle, that's caught by Daniel Kirkland, but a fumble, and Isaiah Brown is going to pick it up. It's a good hit right there. We, uh, we knocked the ball loose, and Isaiah Brown was there. Isaiah uh, sees the ball up in the air, and we pick it up, and, uh, and we get a big turnover. We get another big turnover, you know. Uh, uh, Cedric Stegall, he intercepts uh, two balls during the ball game, and I thought he played. I thought he played well uh, in this football game. And here, running the football is Torn Curtsy, loss of one. They have a lot of new players defensively, especially up front. They got some size. They brought some size in. They got some speed there. Uh, they seem to play, as I stated earlier, they seem to be playing with a great deal of continuity, and uh, that's a little bit unusual to be as, uh, uh, as young as they are, uh, particularly with new guys coming in. And with the uh what, Counts uh, had to take the ball down and run. I don't know if you expected for West to run the football 15 times. No, uh, West is not scheduled to run the football. Our quarterbacks don't run the football that much, but uh, he had to pull it down. He had to run because of the pressure. There's Torn Curtsy over the left side. Here, Kelverick Green, uh, uh, and ironically, somebody called you on your talk show uh, Thursday night and said, uh, would you ever have Green and Curtsy in there at the same time? And it happened in Jacksonville. Well, we've been trying to work uh, Kelverick in, but he's been bothered by the ankle, and hopefully now he's got some game uh, experience under his belt, and maybe the ankle does not swell on him and it's not getting so on him. So we're going to have to play Kelverick. He's a good tailback, and we're going to have to play him. Matt Lowe with the catch. Nice cutback by uh, Kelverick there. Well, we got to have running backs that run the ball downhill. Uh, we're not going to get big gaping holes all the time, and we're going to have to take the, uh, the short seam. I thought he was in here. I did, too. I didn't think there was a question about him being in, but we were fortunate enough to run the quarterback sneak with counts. And we still don't get a great deal of movement here, uh, but we got enough to get us into the end zone. Counts goes in, the Raiders take a 6-0 lead. The extra point by Keegan Ray makes it seven, and this is with just under two minutes to go before halftime, and I know you wanted to make a stop right there. Well, what we did here, uh, we played it uh, as loose as we could, and we got we got the plays made. But we just give them way too many yards. Uh, this is the second week in a row. Uh, We've, we've not been able to perform in, in this situation here. This is a big play for them that 
We should make the play there. We don't come across, we don't read the ball, we don't read the quarterback well enough, we give them a big play. And consequently, they bring it down on the quarterback draw again. Another big play. Uh, we're working against the clock. And all we want to do is get out of there. And then this young man kicks a, a great field goal for him. He gives him a shot in the arm. And now instead of coming in at the half 7-0, we come in at 7-3 and the momentum goes to them. You got the momentum two years ago right before the half in Jacksonville. Almost the exact same situation for them this time. Right. And, but the, uh, the biggest plus for us, uh, Chip, is we come back second half and we get to football. Mm -hmm. And if we get any field position, the first five minutes of the second half is going to dictate what's going on. And we get great field position. They blooped the ball on us, and we bring it back out, and we got great field position. We don't do anything with the football. It's 7-3 to three at the half. Middle Tennessee has the lead over Jacksonville. Back with a look at the second half right after this. It's Donnelly Show. Once again, we're in the courtyard of the Business Aerospace Building here on the MTSU campus. And, Coach, it's 7-3 to three at the half. Uh, did you feel like you'd made the plays defensively you wanted to make? Well, I didn't think they would score a lot of points on us, uh, Chip. I thought we were playing uh, other than giving big plays up occasionally. I thought we were playing reasonably well, and I thought we could, we could shut those people down. But, unfortunately, uh, as it worked out that they were shutting us down and we couldn't get anything started offensively where we could do something with the football. And if there was ever a point where you wanted to do something, it was after this second half kickoff and uh, you, you, you're three and out. Well, Keith Dollar gets the blue, brings it back out, and we got what we want. We got great field position. We own somewhere around the 37, 38 yard line. You can't ask for more than that. But we don't do anything with the ball after that. West Counts uh, is going to get hit behind the line of scrimmage. You got sacked seven times yesterday, and that's mm -hmm. something that you were saying was you didn't really care for. No, you know, and, and not only the word we were sacked, but, you know, he had to run uh, quite a few times, too. So uh, if you consider those seven plus what he had to do on his own, uh, I thought the young man had to fight for his life out there uh, numerous, numerous times. Kendall Newsom, we saw, caught a pass there, and here are the Raiders with their first punt, and once again, great coverage. You know, I cannot be any more uh, pleased with the way we're covering it, but uh, we're going to have to get better at the protection part of it. We, uh, we missed a couple of schemes, and we were fortunate enough to get away with the punt. Michael Days, uh, their tailback, uh, takes the, the carry there. They had lost a, a tailback earlier in the week. You know, they, they lost a tailback, but they're not a good running football team, and right here is a ter terrible mistake on our part. We're in 3 deep coverage, and they throw a slant route. And our free safety don't come over, and our corner takes a, uh, a calculated uh, chance there, and we just miss the ball. And sometimes that will happen. So the extra point uh, being put up by Joey, or rather by Brad Hopkins, gives uh, Jacksonville the 10 to 7 lead. And from here, it becomes really a defensive struggle, and chances for either team to score become few and far between. From then on out, it was just uh, purely a defensive football game. Uh, we don't do anything with the football. They don't do a great deal with it. I thought this, again, was a pretty good return. Kicks the ball down in the, in the hole, and I thought Salicio brought it back reasonably well, and we got it at the 31, 32 yard line. But again, you see that we don't, we don't stay with blocks, and we don't run our feet through, and we're going to have to do that to create some seams. Matt Lowe on the receiving end. He caught a couple of passes yesterday, got back into things. They've got a great uh, a secondary. They're all skilled back there, and they all return, particularly the young man there, number three. He's a pretty good player. Wes has to pull this ball down, find what he can get, and go and know where the uh, yard markers are and try to get to the yardage. When he did that, was it that there were there cover people doing a good job? Well, I don't think they were doing as great a job. Uh, you got to remember, Wes hasn't been back there that often, mm -hmm. and uh, he's going to have to be able to know how to step up into the pocket, evade somebody, and reload and be ready to go. And he'll get better at that. Right here, the uh, reverse is, is read pretty well. It's uh, uh, they try to run a reverse on us out of motion and all, and I thought uh, Kendall Whitehead does, did a good job of staying home on the backside, and our linebackers came to it. There's a pass out in the flat to uh, Daniel Kirkland and uh, Jacksonville being bottled up here. Well, Isaiah Brown, who is also the outside backer, is getting better and better and better. They start to try to run the quarterback draw again on us. And as you see, we started to play it a little bit better. And here's where special teams can turn a game around with their punter. He kicks it 58 yards and pins you back. Well, you know, he really catches this ball well. And uh, he just turned the field on us. We got great field position. Uh, we got a good return guy if we can get our hands on the ball, and he turned the field completely on us there, and now we're back down in the hole again. Fifteen minutes to play. The Raiders are down by three. Jacksonville with the football as Kirby rushes over the left end for nine yards and a first down, and uh, here on the option, uh, they get five more. Well, that should not create as a problem, but obviously it does. We got, uh, we got the contained guy on the pitch, and we also should have an outside 
end uh, taking the quarterback, and uh, we just don't do it. Ball pops loose, but he's out of bounds. Uh, here, we will see uh, the pitch to the left side as Days uh, gets caught behind the line of scrimmage. Great hit by Cedric Steele. Awfully good, awfully good stick there by Cedric. Kind of knocked him a little bit dizzy there, but he's okay. But I thought Cedric played well the whole ball game. We'll see Cedric. Uh, Cedric did, he said, okay, give me a couple of seconds. I'm going to be okay. Get the cobwebs out. He, I think, had to be your defensive player of the game. Well, I don't think there's any question about that. You know, we got to have more people follow suit on contacting uh, uh, people the way he did. Here was a great play by us. Keith Dolly intercepts this ball, but it was caused because of Kendall White. He comes Good from the pressure. back side. Exactly. And he hits him right when he releases the ball, and uh, it was a great play by Kendall White. Here. Raiders driving into the wind there, as you see, into the in the fourth quarter, and this is the possession. I think uh, if you sit in the stands, this is the one where you had to get something done. Well, we had to do something with the ball. The time is going down on us. It's obvious we haven't moved the football at all the first half, and we haven't moved it much the second half. This is a big play here. This is a prep. Uh, with uh, Kel Verick playing the fullback position, and it opened up for us. And we get we get a good play here. We get us out of the hole, and we're, we got a chance to move the ball, but still we're not moving anybody off the line of scrimmage. There's Torn Curtsy for five more. The Raiders have a first and ten at the 25, and here Counts looks over the middle and finds Gary Davis. He finds he does a good job here. Uh, Gary's sitting down in the hole. Gary's got to run a little bit better than that. That's one guy that's got it. It's a big first down opportunity for us, and he's got to come out of some of that. Here, West had to pull the ball down and gets a couple of yards. Well, they, you know, they just kept pressure on us, and we're a little bit too soft protecting him. Curtsy, right side, gets about six more and uh, close to a first down. You know, Curtsy, uh, uh, he's got the ability to run, but he's going to have to run behind his pads a lot more. Third and one, Curtsy hit at midfield. It's not a good... Uh, it wasn't a well-executed play. We need about uh, two, uh, two feet or maybe a yard, and we go for it on both downs, and we don't get it either, uh, either time. And any time, uh, Chip, you got two shots at uh, two feet, and you can't get it, uh, you don't deserve to win a football game. And, and that's the way it turned out. 10-7 to 7 is the final score as uh, you go out and meet Coach Mike Williams following uh, the, the Raider loss to Jacksonville. 10-7 the final score as Middle Tennessee's record drops to 1-2. and two. We'll take a break and be back with more with Coach Donnelly right after this. Go to the Raider locker room and talk to some of the Middle Tennessee players. Well, I just want to get in and perform well. Uh, I've been rehabbing my ankle and it's doing fine and I just want to get out there and help the team. When you train all week to come out here, you prepare to win. I mean... You think you have the right game plan. You think you have everything together. And for things just not to come together as they were, I mean, it just it hurts. But, I mean, this is the third game of the season. Got a long way to go. We got to come back to practice and pick it up, pick it up even harder than last week. Offensive line as a unit was probably given a lot of credit in the win against Tennessee State. Uh, offensive line probably now is taking a look, probably, probably got too much credit. Uh, now you're probably taking some heat for some things that are going on, probably too much heat. Talk about that. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much, you got it right on the head. It, uh, you make a win, tailbacks are going to thank you and all that, but they do a lot of the job, and you take a loss, they're going to find something up front that broke down to get so they can get through. I mean, it's just part of the job. It's, we accept full responsibility for this one. We should have we should have done a lot more than we did today. This loss really really hurts bad because we, we anticipated on winning. We came out hard, worked hard all week saying that we're going to win this one. You know, it was a big shock to us that we came out with a loss. Well, it's real frustrating. Um, offensively, we just got to do something when we get a chance to get the ball. This is going to be a tough week. We got Eastern Kentucky coming up. I mean, we're at home again, so that's going to be nice. But uh, we got to pick it up another. We're going to get this game behind us and start preparing for Eastern. I know the folks at home, when you, when you guys ran out and there were 28,000 people in the stadium uh, three weeks ago, that, that obviously had to help. If you were to give a message to those folks again, what would it be with Eastern coming in? It's a big rivalry. It's a conference. We're one to know in the conference, so we're still ahead. Come on out and see it. I mean, we're going to need your help. Get them out and get it loud in there. I want all the students to come out and give us a, a hand in helping us beat Eastern next week, and all the fans just come out and support us. Coach, I know anytime you have a loss, some, it's hard to find some, some positive things out of it. And, and uh, the one thing we heard 
more and more positive things about it as we look through that tape was, was special team coverage, and that is something that's happened as, as the season has gone along. You've gotten better and better. Well, we've gotten better at it, Chip. What we have to do is continue to get better at it, and sooner or later, if we continue to do what we're doing, we're going to get some breaks there, and we're going to make some turnovers there, and it's going to be a big part of the, uh, uh, the football team for the rest of the year now that we're getting into the meat of the schedule and with Eastern Kentucky coming into our place we're going to have to really be good in all phases of the game. As we wrap up our coverage of the Jacksonville State game, your final thoughts on that and, and what needs to be done? Well, you know, uh, Chip, we're going to have to do a, a lot offensively. Uh, defensively, uh, other than two plays, uh, allowing them to drive the ball right before the half, to kick the field goal, and then the big uh, pass for the touchdown, I thought we played reasonably well. We gave up a lot of yardage, which we're going to have to continue to work against. But overall, I thought we played well enough on defense side to, to win the football game. But we're going to have to get something done with the offense, and we're going to have to put some points on the board. We'll take a time out here as Middle Tennessee falls to Jacksonville State. 10 to 7 is the final score. Back with a look at other scores around the conference and a look toward next week as we continue right after this. Well, by the way, celebrating its 150th anniversary. The scoreboard saw the Raiders fall at Jacksonville 10 to 7. Tennessee Tech on the road at UAB, a future Raider opponent. UAB gets the win 38 to 6. Eastern Illinois bounces back from their loss at Central Florida to defeat 1A Northern Illinois 24 to 10. Eastern Kentucky, the Raiders' opponent this week, goes to Bowling Green and defeats Western Kentucky 27 to 16. And Murray State joins the Raiders on top of the Ohio Valley Conference standings with a 26 to 14 win in Cape Girardeau against Southeast Missouri. And that's a look at your DNJ scoreboard. Find them on the World Wide Web at www.dnj.com. And Coach, uh, speaking of Western Kentucky, they do come in this week. Murray State joins you on top of the, the uh, conference standings. And that's one thing about a loss to Jacksonville State. It did not count in the conference. You still lead the league right now. Well, you know, that's the biggest plus we got right now, Chip. Uh, we've got Eastern Kentucky coming in. Uh, it should be an exciting football game. We've always had great rivalry against Eastern Kentucky. And what we have to do is regroup. Uh, we have to get this bad taste out of our mouth, and we have to get back to work. And we are 1-0 uh, and in the conference, and that's what we have to play for. Talking to your players, they, they, uh, they like the excitement of playing uh, in the stadium. They like the excitement of the crowd and, and said that they kind of invited folks to come on out and make sure that they're there this week? Well, what we have to do is uh, we have to live up to our end of the bargain. We have to go out and we have to play with emotion. We have to play with excitement and we have to have some fun playing. And right now, I don't think we've gone the uh, last couple of weeks. I don't think we've gone with that type of enthusiasm and we're going to have to do that back home. All right. Well, good luck to you and the guys this week. Thank you. For Coach Boots Donnelly, this is Chip Walters saying thanks for being with us this week and we'll talk to you next Sunday night. We were trying to throw the football there, and they flushed us out from the back side, and he was able to pick up about seven, eight yards and come back here with a little bubble pass. We uh, flip it out to uh, Salicio, and he makes a good run on it. Torn Curtsy gets uh, three yards on his uh, second carry of the night there, and in your running backs, you put together about 170 yards rushing total. Well, it's also important, too, the chip, that when you start the football game, uh, even though you don't score, you, you pick up a couple of first downs. It gives you a lot of confidence in what you can do with the football. And speaking of guys you'll see a lot of, Corey Kroom, uh, he carried it, I think, 38 times last night. Well, they lose the other tailback. There are two tailback football team, and the other tailback, Logan, could not play, and uh, so they had to go to him, and they go to him uh, quite often. There's a pass to Menendez, an interference call. They come back down the other sideline looking for Menendez, and there's an interference call here that I didn't see. Well, you know, uh, the first interference call was absolutely correct. Uh, uh, this call here, you know, that's just the way it goes. Uh, sometimes you get the calls for you, and sometimes you don't get the calls. But whether it was interference or not, that's questionable to me also. But you hate to give up 30 yards with, with him not earning it. Well, you know, uh, that's all part of the <laughs> Eastern uh, Middle game. Uh, some crazy stuff happens in the game. Now, here is a fourth and 10 at your 30 and crazy play. Well, you know, it's not, uh, it's not as much. Uh, we flush him out of the pocket. He rolls well, and he throws it. Uh, it's uh, just a bad job on our part. Uh, all we need to do is deflect the ball, knock it, knock it away, and we get the ball, and they end up at seven points. 
Next possession for the Raiders, and boy, you got the running game going here. There's Torn for nine yards, uh, and here he comes back to the left side, hits Andrew McDonald, but still cuts it up for four more. Plays, uh, we, we played exceptionally well offensively with the exception of a few plays, but that's uh, uh, part of Eastern's uh, defensive scheme, too, but I really was pleased the way we played except at the end of the game. We saw a few new wrinkles uh, thrown in, and, and, and I guess that's stuff you put in the package as you go along throughout the year, but also, I guess, just well, it's a week-to-week -week thing. Uh, things that the Eastern gives you. Uh, you know, if they give it to you, you got to take it and some things here. I thought this was a, thought it was a well-called uh, football game. Uh, as far as our coaching staff and all, they had the football team prepared, but we, we're just a little bit undisciplined right here. Well, what a break. You know, what a bad break for us here. It's a great run, and we got it down and turned the ball over, and we haven't turned it over all year, and we turn it over here. So Eastern tries to come out of the shadow of their own goal post, but uh, playing that goal line defense the other way, you, you shut them completely down. Yeah, you know, we, uh, we played exceptionally well, uh, Chip, uh, just about the whole ball game. Uh, we do not do a good job in the kicking game, and it ended up costing us at the end of the game uh, severely. Uh, it's the first time we haven't done a good job in the kicking game. The redshirt freshman, Wes Counts, goes to work here, hitting uh, Trey Hurd, the senior, for three yards. Coming back to Matt Lowe for eight more, and uh, you, you, at least you had the field turned around here, and you, well, and you had on the you had uh, a short field to work with. Right, you know, Eastern Kentucky is not a big blitzing football team. They play you very sound, uh, play you very solid, and they gave us some of the short stuff, and we worked all week to take that. Well, good play action and the throw to Gary Davis, a nice run. It's a good run. It's a uh, well blocked down uh, downfield by Newsom, who is a true freshman. The young man's going to be a good player, and I thought Gary caught the ball and ran with it well. And the play here for the touchdown, explain this. Wow. Well, he just makes a <laughs> tremendous effort, and that's what you have to do. Uh, Eastern there does the same thing that we do sometimes. You end up hitting the quarterback a little bit low, and he bounces out of it and made a great second effort, and Matt Lowe caught the ball. And That's the type of plays you have to have in these type football games. Somebody has to rise to the occasion and make a play, and West Counts made one. Now. So as uh, we got near the end of the first quarter, it's 7-7, but Eastern Kentucky will get the football back again. Corey Kroom on the toss he had uh, uh, they you held them under 100 yards net rushing and what a lick he took well, there you know uh, Tyler Walker hit him a pretty good lick there but we kept most of the seams cut down this is what's uh, what's hurting us our secondary we're not playing as uh, aggressively we're not playing as smart as we we should there's no reason to give up all of these uh, big plays like we're giving them up so 15 minutes in the book it's all even Eastern now running left to right and you're going to get a little dose of Corey Kroom here. Yeah, we miss a tackle there, and we shouldn't miss a tackle. You know, there's a, uh, you, you've got you got to hit people, and, uh, and you got to run your feet through them, and you got to hold on. Uh, right now, they kind of wash us down through here. And uh, you held them on two downs, and on third down and goal, uh, Kroom goes over the top. Well, when they go over the top, we got to go over the top, and we didn't do that from the backside linebacker. But, uh, uh, you know, we're still fighting it as hard as we can fight it. And it's a heck of a football game right now, and both teams are in it, and it's just a matter who's going to make the plays at the end of the game and that's what ended up costing us a good return here you know we continue to do well with the, with the kickoff return and as you said a good game gets even better here is Kelverick Green and Boy, the one-two punch you have when you have a healthy Kelverick Green really adds a new dimension to it. Well, it's the first time that Kelverick has really been uh, healthy where he feels good, uh, where he's not concerned about his ankle. And I thought we blocked it exceptionally well, and he hit the creases and ran. Hansford Johnson, the freshman out of Alabama. Uh, he's going to be a good player. Uh, Chip, we're really pleased with the way he and Newsom uh, uh, is playing. Right here is another uh, excellent run, excellent blocking, and we just continue to go. So the Raiders have it down uh, at the Eastern Kentucky 15 and counts looking for true freshman Kendall Newsom. Well executed play. This is a little uh, jailbreak that we call. Uh, it's a screen. It's a little bit from outside in. Uh, screen and everybody goes and we call it jailbreak. So it's pretty good and well executed play there. And uh, that play by the, by the young freshman had uh, the 19,000 plus on hand at uh, Floyd Stadium. Uh, rocking and rolling. We're tied at 14 uh, with 10 minutes to go in the half. Uh, Eastern with the football here on fourth down, and you come, you block the punt. And uh, you know, Mario Kelso blocks it. Uh, came clean. A week ago, he had two of them. Mm -hmm. uh, he missed both of them. Here, uh, all we had to do is keep composure, fall on the ball, keep it in the end zone. We get six. As it was, we dive on the ball, it squirts out, and we end up with a safety. And that the way breaks go, we'll see later on how luck can play into that. 
and at the half, Middle Tennessee is ahead on the safety by a score of 16 to 14. Well, we, you know, we go in the half, uh, we're ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, Eastern is doing nothing to us uh, offensively, except we've given them a, a couple of big plays. Uh, we're moving the ball consistently on our side of it. All we have to do is continue to play. We don't need to change anything. We just need to up the level of the intensity for the last 30 minutes, and we win this football game. Yeah. 16 to 14 at the half, Middle Tennessee up by a deuce. We'll be back to take a look at one of the Raiders seniors as we continue right after this team has a very interesting and diverse senior class. One of those fellows is from Grove, Oklahoma, and Mary Beth Harper introduces us to Matt Norwood. Football players are in for a big change when they leave the world of high school and come to play on the collegiate level. The familiar hometown faces are left behind as they adopt a whole new group of teammates, some from all over the country. Such is the case of senior Matt Norwood, all the way from Grove, Oklahoma. Coach Donnelly, at first, I mean, he's quite the personality. The first time I ever met him, I never heard of Middle Tennessee before, and he came in and uh, found me at a junior college and talked to me. And I've never been in this. This is the first time I've been to the, past the east of the Mississippi, so I was just kind of curious about what the southeast had to offer. And I came down and looked at it, and it was actually more than I thought it was going to be. It was real nice. During practice, MTSU football players learn more than just tackles and touchdowns. They gain valuable skills that will help them in the game of life. Actually, waking up at 7.30 in the morning and not getting back to your room until 9, 9.30 at night, I mean, it teaches you long hours and hard work. Other than that, it's, it's been a lot of fun, too. MTSU's campus is growing more and more each day, so it only makes sense that the football program would keep up the pace. If you've been around Murfreesboro, this place is growing. I've been here for three years and it's grown, I mean, enormously. I mean, with the new stadium and all the new facilities and uh, the growth of just the campus in general, all the new uh, facilities that are going on campus, it's, I think everything's going to turn out right. We're going to start, if we were at the first game, what, we had 27,000. Hopefully we can keep that up and, uh, I mean, it's going to be fun. We're going to start bringing in some big teams and hopefully get some good crowds. The renovation and expansion of the stadium has already created record-breaking crowd attendance. High attendance is the first step for the advancement to Division 1A football. Yeah, that first game, it was, it was hard to keep pretty calm. I mean, it, everything inside is just moving. You're thinking about your responsibilities. You're thinking about the crowd. I mean, it's, it was fun. I mean, it was a lot of fun. Matt Norwood's heart was in the game from the very beginning as he set out to carry on the MTSU football tradition. Even before we got the stadium built, it was, I mean, it's the big helmet. Yeah. I mean, it's been a tradition. It's been called the big helmet for a long time, and we've kind of got a tradition of hopefully not getting beat here at home. College athletics takes hard work, determination, and lots of practice. None of this would fall into place, however, if it weren't for the encouragement and support of head coach Boots Donnelly. I mean, he's my kind of, he's an old school coach. He's all about hard work and, uh, I mean, busting it. Yeah. If, you don't, if you don't work for him, he's not going to play you. Yeah. And if you work, you'll get your chance. What does MTSU offensive coordinator Coach John Bobo have to say? Yeah, he's a good player. He's, uh, he's physical. He can, he, can, he can match up against anybody, any size. Uh, there have been some times where I wish he'd use better technique. But uh, pretty much for the most part, he's... Uh, he's He's pretty consistent offensive lineman. Matt Norwood's college football career will come to a close at the end of the 1998 season. Matt wants him and his team to be remembered as winners. First for the whole team, I want to be remembered as winners. I mean, we, all the seniors want to go out as winners. That's their main, that's their main goal. But me personally, just someone, if you think back, just a hard-nosed player that will get the job done for you. For the Boots Donnelly Show, I'm Mary Beth Harper. Coach Matt Norwood is one of those guys you love to have on the football team personality-wise, leadership-wise, uh, physically. He's an imposing guy out there on the field as well. You know, Matt has what, uh, what you like to have in a football player because he's enjoyable to coach. He works exceptionally hard. He has a personality, and he likes to win, and he is an excellent uh, offensive center. I've made a statement over and over. I think he's the best in the conference. Yeah, he's a good one, that's for sure. Thanks to Mary Beth, and thanks to uh, Matt Norwood for taking time to be with us this week. We'll take a break and be back to look at the second half of the Raiders and Eastern Kentucky right after this.
Go on the MTSU campus and coach, you're, you're up 16 to 14 at the half. Second week in a row, you've got the lead, but uh, you had to feel a lot better about the way you were playing this week than last. Well, you know, unfortunately, we come out the second half, we allow them to move the ball for a couple, two or three first downs. They punt it. We have the ball on our seven. Uh, we got to do something with it, and we don't, and then we have to end up punting the ball, and then we start to break down from there. We'll take a look at the Raiders' first possession after uh, Eastern picked up a couple of first downs and were forced to punt. The Raiders did get it first and ten at their own seven. Here's Torn Curtsy uh, rushing up the middle for four yards. Boy, and he's got a big hole and he stumbles and, uh, and falls there. We've got a big play coming right there, but we don't make it. Curtsy here for one. Yep, and uh, you know, Eastern Kentucky is an excellent disciplined football team. We throw here, we try to hit the bubble quick again. And we get the punt off, and then they called us for holding, uh, Tip. It's very rare. You'll ever see that done. But it is a good call. Uh, we do hold a guy. We grab him, and then we have to go back and kick it out of eye end zone. The snap is a little bit to the right, a little bit high. And they come in, and they get the hands on it, and the ball ends up on the two-yard line. Now they knock it in for six. Or we block one, it goes out of the end zone for two. Yeah, that's what we were talking about earlier. When, uh, when you watch the breaks of the game, you know, where it, where it landed was, you know, was just something that was a little different. Well, you almost came up with a great goal line stand. You stop them twice, and here on third and goal. We believe there's a fumble there. Yeah. Oh, we got the ball out. And uh, I don't know what happens here, but we should have never had the ball blocked. Uh, to begin with. Again, yeah. It is Corey Croom over left tackle, and Eastern Kentucky will uh, surge back into the lead at 21 to 16, but there is a, a, a lot of football left to play. As a matter of fact, over 20 minutes more, and uh, the Raiders will uh, get it back toward the end of the third quarter. West Counts takes over here and uh, hits Matt Lowe for 15 yards, and this was a good drive. Good drive. It's a good throw. It's a good catch. It's a good run. You know, with all the time left, uh, that's what the Eastern middle game is all about. It's, it's one scores, another one will score, and you've got great plays in. You get great effort on both sides, and we're moving the football right back down the field. Curtsy with a sprint draw. Now the hard count. And we go to a hard count, and, uh, and we draw them not on that. We, I think we get it twice. You know, this is the way Torn Kirksey can win. You give him a crease, the young man can do something with the ball. And the way that uh, the, the passing game was going, it was opening things up, too. Well, you got to run to throw, and you got to throw to run. Uh, it's, you know, it's either or. Uh, you have to have some success with both sides of it. There's Celicio Sanford, and boy, he is Mr. Excitement when you get it in his hands. Well, the young man can make plays, and he has to make plays because he's one of our skilled people, and that's what Celicio is, is capable of doing. And I thought he played hard all night. There was a couple of uh, times there I thought he had an excellent chance to take it, but there's one guy that would end up catching it. So with the Raiders up 21-20, to 20, or 22-21, you went right. for two, which the computer we calls went, for. We went for two, and, uh, you know, we, we've got a little trip set here, and we're going to try to pick and, and slide somebody out in the flat, and as it worked out, they, they picked him up pretty good, and I thought West did a great job of getting split in the corner of that end zone for two points. So now it's 24-21, Middle Tennessee, and uh, right near the end of the third quarter, uh, the kickoff by Keegan Ray, and uh, Eastern fielded five kicks last night, and they only were able to bring one back. Right, Keegan continues to kick the ball off well. I think Keegan right now understands the value that he has to this football team. As long as he kicks them deep in the end zone, they get it at the 20. Here's John Denton passing complete to Rondell Menendez for 10 yards, and as the third quarter comes to a close, talk about John Denton a little bit. Well, you know, he's a good football player. Uh, I think he's now just coming into his own in the Eastern's uh, 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 scheme of things. But the, this is what the guy hurts you with right here. He scrambles out. We had him sacked back there. We turn him loose. We don't do a good job of covering people down field after the scramble starts, and this is where we start falling apart a little bit in the second day. They hit Brenneman there for uh, eight more yards, and well, Brenneman's one of those guys that's been around there for a while. Well, yeah, you know, they're, they're a fine football team. They've got a lot of confidence in themselves, and when you get ahead, they come right back down the field, and you got to stop them. They're not going to stop themselves. Kroom inside the uh, the 15 yard line, or down to actually the 17, and Kroom here uh, hit in the backfield by Keith Paldo. We keep playing hard, uh, but unfortunately, we've got to do a better job on third down. We've got to do a better job stopping things. And, and here again, uh, you know, we just blow the assignment, and he sticks it in there because he's an excellent thrower. He's got excellent receivers, and they make the play. 
28-24 now, a uh, couple of possessions later, and this is uh, what uh, you might call the money possession where you got to do something. Well, you know, and we're doing it. Yeah. You know, that's the great thing about here. Again, is excellent effort by, by Counts. Excellent effort. Kendall Newsom. Great catch by Kendall, uh, a true freshman. That's what you have to do. You know, uh, they're ahead of us now. We got to come back and we got to make the play. This is so remindful of the last drive against Tennessee State. There's Green for four. He's going to carry it four straight more times for runs of eight, nine, and nine. You know, and we rip them pretty good. We're doing a great job up front blocking, and we just got to keep on. But we have to put it in the end zone. And if we do, uh, you know, we win the football game. But unfortunately, we get it down here where it gets tough and tougher to run the football, and we don't get it in. He bends it back uh, awful well, and here on uh, is, a play, is a throw to Matt Lowe. Almost got it, but a good defensive play by Eastern, which sets you up third and goal at the seven-yard line. Yep, and uh, we try to come out of here with a boot on the backside, but Eastern Kentucky is very well disciplined, and we lose, lose a handle on the ball, and they get it. And basically, that's the tip. You know, it's, uh, it's tough because we played so well. Uh, it's hard on the players. It's a, it's a loss that uh, we're going to either use to pull us together, uh, continue on to become a better football team, or it's a loss that could devastate us, and we're just going to have to wait this week and see. All right. 28-24, the final score. Eastern Kentucky gets the win. We'll wrap things up with Coach Donnelly as we continue right after this. By the Daily News Journal, now celebrating 150 years in publication. Checking the scores from Saturday, Middle Tennessee on the short end of the Eastern Kentucky scored 28-24. Murray State travels to Utah and loses to BYU 43-9. This week's opponent, Tennessee Tech, loses at Eastern Illinois 13-6. Tennessee State on the road losing to Florida A&M 31-23. And Southeast Missouri was a winner at home over Tennessee Martin by a score of 41 to 14. And that's a look at the Daily News Journal scoreboard brought to you by the DNJ. Find them on the World Wide Web at www.dnj.com. Coach, frustrating because you dominate statistically, run the football up and down the field, come out short on the scoreboard. That's the frustrating part. But there were some, uh, are there silver linings in that? Well, if we take it correctly, mm -hmm. uh, Chip, uh, if we watch the films closely, uh, if we go back and review everything that we've done, there's a tremendous amount of uh, pluses. Uh, but then again, it all depends on our mindset, mm -hmm. uh, how we approach practice this week, the mistakes that we made, we have to correct. Uh, they're all mental mistakes, they're not physical mistakes. Uh, we're not concentrating enough to do our assignments on, uh, from play to play in order to win football games. And all 60 guys have to be committed to making plays. And whether you're in the game or not, you have to be encouraging the other ones if you're not. And unfortunately, we played well. Uh, we made some uh, bonehead uh, plays, but overall, I was pleased with the effort, particularly coming off of the last week's game. All right. Well, that's a good way to end things. Good luck this week at Tech. Appreciate it. All right. That'll do it for this week. This is Chip Walter saying thanks for joining us, and we'll talk to you next Sunday. Yeah. For no, no gain, West counts. Uh, uh, good coverage sack, I guess, because the they did a good job downfield. Well, on this particular play right here, we had a guy open in the void, and the West didn't see him uh, early. And then here again, we throw one out, and and our freshman receiver, Kendall Newsom, loses it. You know. uh, this right here is a bad snap over our punter's head, but it also proves that West Stevens can snap the ball a long way. So uh, that came close to going to Las Casas. We'll see West Stevens do some good things before this game is over with. So the Raiders on the free kick get it out to, uh, there's Walter Hill, and he tiptoes his way back up to the 46, and that's where Tennessee Tech starts their first offensive yeah, position. Unfortunately, we're, uh, you know, we're kind of discombobulated right through here. We've given them the two, and then they take this drive right on in after the kick, and we don't do a lot. We're playing very passive, playing very soft. Tillman had a big game against you last year. You pretty much kept him bottled up for most of the day. If you give the young man a crack, uh, he has got great vision and great feet and speed. He can do you some damage, but if you keep uh, you keep tight reins on him, he doesn't run uh, inside uh, if he doesn't have any creases. There you see Keith Paldo, LeBron Elder, some guys wrapping him up. Well, you know, we, we, we still don't play very well here. There's run a little tight end delay, which creates us some problems with the inside linebackers, and they came back to it later on with a back. And uh, here's a very poor tackle there. We've got him set up in a hole, and we duck ahead. And, end up uh, missing the tackle here. Right up off, uh, right outside the tackle, Tillman goes in for the touchdown, and really, uh, before hardly any times off the clock, it is nine to nothing. 
It's nine to nothing, and we're uh, we're not playing very well. But then again, we've got a long way to play. What we need to do is get ourselves settled down. We'll be okay. You know, they put a tremendous amount of effort into this football game, uh, Chip. And, and I thought we came back and uh, got ourselves straightened up, and we started playing well. Well, I'll tell you, you got your feet on the ground and starting with this possession immediately. Right. Well, we have to because we're down. We're down so uh, so far, so early. We've got to get some momentum back uh, as quick as we can here. We don't do a good job of blocking and rest, so uh, get sacked again. You had two fabulous drives, one of 10 plays, one of 16 plays yesterday, and you had to overcome penalties in both of them. All, uh, uh, it was an amazing uh, two drives for us. I thought here Matt Lowe caught, uh, caught a tough ball there to give us a first down. Here is Torn Kurtzy. Kurtzy uh, around the right side runs through some people. He, he, uh, Torn needs to do that uh, a lot more, and he's got the ability to do it because a young man can run inside as well as he can run outside. Here we go. But I thought, uh, you know, all week long, uh, Coach Robinson kept saying they'll give us this if we hit it and pick it at the right time. The biggest problem on that play is making sure the handoff is good and the pitch back to the quarterback, and he gets it off in time. And it worked out well for us. Here's another look at it again, and you'll see Torn does his part getting the ball back. Everybody sells the run, and Silesio's wide open. Uh, wide open. He's sitting there just waiting. I thought West did a great job of just putting enough air under the ball to get it to him and let him do his thing with his speed. So Raiders up 9-6, to six, uh, in the, or, or Raiders down 9-6. to six. But uh, everything, everybody's feeling a lot better after a Tennessee Tech possession. Middle Tennessee gets the ball back. Here's Torn Curtsy again for five yards. Tennessee Tech is awfully good uh, chip up front. Uh, they've got some people up front that can play. Uh, we were able to make some throws and make some great catches. Here's a super catch by Solis. And uh, he has got, you know, he's got the ability to make a lot of things happen. You know, good run here. He just, that's, he's just the way he, that's the way he goes. That's yeah. the way he should go all the time. Uh, once he gets his shoulders downhill and gets them so he can make cuts left or right, uh, the young man can really play. Keeping the freshman involved, Kendall Newson. Yeah, you know, I wish he would catch it a little bit quicker. Uh, I wish he would turn it upfield and go on about his business. Uh, there, uh, he's going to be an awfully good player. Here's another excellent run by Torn. And speaking of excellent runs, let's get another freshman involved here on the end around. Hansford Johnson uh, will take it into the end zone, but uh, keep in mind there will be a flag on this play. Well, you know, and I really don't know. I haven't watched it close enough yet to see whether we have or we haven't, but that right there, that play was executed. It's pretty in the holy picture. And that's what we want done uh, over and over by getting us out of some holes by making some plays. Wes, good decision here. Puts it, pulls it down and runs with it. Every snap he takes, he gets a little bit more uh, uh, composed. He gets a little bit more sight on what he's supposed to be doing. He, the young man has done an excellent job the last couple of weeks. Here is Kelverick Green into the ball game, and boy, he bends it back so well. <laughs> he bends it back, he sees, he gets over his pads, he runs. There's He's just an excellent running back. Silesio Sanford gets it down to about the five yard line. Raiders, uh, after the first quarter comes to a close, still trailing by three, but knocking on the door. And here is uh, this Torn Curtsy yeah. trying to find a hole and nothing there. Well, when you don't have anything, you got to make something. Uh, Speaking of making something. Well, he can do this. Uh, this is what this guy can do. It's our job to get him some balls out there where he's got some grass between he and the, the, the defender, and he can do some damage to you. Silesio's had three touchdowns against Tennessee Tech in the last two years. Raiders take the lead now at 13-9. to nine. There was a missed extra point on the first touchdown, and here before the half, Raiders get it back, and there's Sanford with the... 13-yard gainer from West Counts and coming right back, it's going to be the same combination. Well, we wanted to take some pressure off the inside because, as I stated earlier, the, the up-front people are pretty good. And to move him out of the pocket a little bit uh, creates him a problem. Also gets him a little bit tired, too. There's Trey Hurd, another senior. And Trey uh, made two great catches for us during this ball game, got us out of the hole, and that was a good catch right there. Speaking of seniors, Matt Lowe. You know, and what can you say that hadn't been said? Well, you know, uh, <laughs> that's what the seniors have to do. We have to get them all involved, and they all have to make plays. I thought that uh, Keegan Ray came back after the missed extra point, because that's the only rule he has here. You don't miss an extra point, and unfortunately, he misses that one. thought he came back with composed and kicked the field goal. It was a big kick for us. 16-9 to 9 is the score at the half. Middle Tennessee uh, with the lead over Tennessee Tech in Cookville. We'll be back to take a look at a couple of Raiders seniors as we continue right after this. <laughs> athletic department they've been together for so long they're starting to look like each other and sound like each other Mary Beth Harper introduces us to two Blue Raider senior defensive backs Daryl Love and Cedric Stegall MTSU cornerbacks Daryl Love and Cedric Stegall are never far apart 
From the football field to the dorm room, these guys stick together like glue. Now, me and Sad are real good friends. Me and Sad are <laughs> like close to best friends. We live together in the summer. We all the time, everywhere you see Sad, most likely you'll see me and vice versa. <laughs> I like the way you act sometimes, you know. It's a di different kind of guy. He's from a different part. Yeah. And it's hard, you know, understanding some of his ways. But, you know, he's a great guy, and I like him. <laughs> With all the publicity surrounding MTSU's move to Division 1A, it would be easy to get caught up in the excitement. Although Love and Seagal will miss making the move by just one season, they're happy to have laid the foundation for future Blue Raiders. I feel glad for everybody that's, that's going to come here to Middle Tennessee and see everything that has gotten done. I don't feel like I'm one of the people that did it. I feel like it's the people that's back in the past that won the OVC championships that led to all of this construction and stuff. First of all, I'm glad to be a part of it, and I don't think I'm going to ever stop supporting the Blue Raiders. I think I'm going to keep supporting them regardless. If I'm not going to be here, I'm still going to support them. It's not surprising that these two would have the same goals in life and plans for what lies ahead. Well, I want to be a football coach myself. You know, I, I've been around football my whole life, and uh, I, feel like I, I feel like I understand the game of football. And, uh, you know, I want to coach. I want to coach on the college level myself. I, I know it's going to be hard, but I, I feel like I can handle it, and I think it'd be very exciting. And me, I like, I like working with kids, and I think I'm going to be a high school coach. You know, I like working with kids and saw how high school players come along, come along, come along. I think I'm going to be able to help them a lot in accomplishing what they need to accomplish. Defensive backs coach Ricky Herzog recognizes their differences and similarities. Or they've both been starting for a long time. They're, uh, you know, both very experienced, and they both practice hard and play hard. The pair has been at the top of their position for the last three years. They're not the biggest or the fastest, but the combination of all of their other skills more than makes up for this. And that's what impresses their coaches. Well, Darrell probably, you know, he's probably not big enough to play. He weighs about 170 pounds and uh, runs fairly well, but he doesn't have great speed. But again, he's, he's a very smart player. He uh, gives tremendous effort, uh, you know, and is a good athlete. Sid uh, is a good man player, and Sid, you know, he's got, I think, three interceptions right now, and he's had a history of, of intercepting the ball, and he doesn't have great hands, but uh, I guess he makes the play when he needs to make it. But uh, both these guys, again, are, are, you know, I'm just lucky enough to walk in there and have them two playing for him. For Darrell Love and Cedric Segal, football has taught them so much more than just the fundamentals of the sport. It has prepared them for the game of life. Coach Donnelly has taught me how to respect different people, not only on the football field, but just in life in general. Mm -hmm. You know, he taught us how to be courtesy to a lot of people. He taught us, you know, football is not everything. You got to have friends all around, and you got to know how to treat people nice in order to be get treated nice. I think Coach Donnelly taught me to how to respond to adversity. You know, that's what life is really about, responding to adversity and how well you adapt to society. For the Boots Donnelly Show, I'm Mary Beth Harper. Coach, these two guys have been playing together, it seems like, forever. And, you know, and you like probably longer than any two DBs you've ever had. I don't remember two uh, that's come in as freshmen and played, sophomores and played. And they have. They've been here for a long time. They've made a tremendous contribution to this university and this football program. And the good thing about uh, Daryl and uh, Sid is that both of them got tremendous personalities. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't see it as much, per se, uh, on the field as you do off the field. Uh, they're pretty good in the locker room. They're pretty good jokesters, uh, and they work exceptionally hard. And they mean uh, uh, extremely. Uh, uh, their personality is they'll do and try to do everything that you ask them to do. And uh, it's been very, very fortunate for us to be able to coach them for four years. Well, the Raiders are leading at halftime at Tennessee Tech by a score of 16 to 9. We'll be back to take a look at the second half highlights as we continue right after this after a sluggish start, really uh, closed out the first half in a strong fashion. And we did, but we have a tendency, for whatever reason, Chip, to start slow. Uh, just about every game that we've come out to second half, we've either given them the momentum back or we don't do anything once we get the ball, and it happened again here. In the second half, we'll pick it up. After Middle Tennessee's first possession of the first half with the clock not running, the Raiders had fumbled the football. Tennessee Tech has it first and ten at our 19. Exactly. They got the ball back because uh, we ran a little slight sprint out with Wes, and they brought the backside in and the frontside backer 
held him up, and the guy hit him in the back, and he didn't see him coming, and he recovered the fumble. I thought this is the biggest series of the game right here. Boy, and your defense Rose. gives up nothing. Gave nothing up. I thought this right here was the turning point, although it got closer and closer at the end of the game. I thought this was big right here. Yeah, you get good pressure from LeBron Elder and forced him to hurry it. Coach Fivash did a great job. He went man quite a few times, and they could not pick up the, uh, the blitz, and they never knew when he was coming, and he sent them all. A couple of times here, they made big plays, and they missed the field goal. Yeah, short field goal is missed. The Raiders get the ball right back. You'd love to be able to come right back and get some points. That would exactly. be kind of demoralizing. You don't do that, but you do clip off some first downs. It's a lot of first downs, and that's a whole key. Whether you get two, three, or four first downs, you've got to come back and maintain some some type of momentum, and we were able to do that. We're doing a great job right here. We're just knocking the ball down, and if we can continue to do that and put it in the end zone, it would have been a great uh, great run right here. Back-to-back -back runs of six yards for Kelvarick Green. Here we will see a, a one-yard pass play as uh, Celicio Sanford. They made a nice adjustment on him at halftime. They're good players. Uh, there's no question about that. They're well-schooled. They're well-coached, and uh, I thought they played well. He was, uh, we were coming back with a little old uh, screen-type play off of the sprint, roll back, and they covered the tight end exceptionally well. I want to see the hit of the day. Watch this coming up from uh, Wes Stevens and Isaiah Brown. Pretty well. Boom! You know, Wes makes first contact. I thought they, you know, thought they blew this ball down a little bit quick. Um, and I thought we were going to gain another 10 or 15 yards. But when we struck him, uh, you know, I guess, you know, I guess it was a good call there, but we sure would have liked to have had him back inside the 20. We'll pick up Tennessee Tech's possession here. First and 10 at the Tech 39-yard line. And T.J. Christian, their fullback, uh, they went to him a couple of times, and he's, he's pretty good on short yards. He's yardage. a good player. He really is. He's an excellent blocker and a very physical player, and he's had an outstanding career there. LeBron Elder. LeBron Elder comes in on the blitz, uh, what we refer to as an exit stunt, and he made a great play there. He's gotten better and better with every snap as well. Here, Peebles passes out to Fergale for 12 yards. And he's also a good stick uh, right there by Kelso. Kelso put his hat dead in the middle of him and knocked him backwards. Here is the, on fourth down, the, the punter, Dorsey, is caught in the backfield. He, he, he saw too much pressure coming. Well, it's two weeks in a row now. We've put pressure on the kicker. I thought the young man responded yeah. after this. Oh, boy, he kicked a couple of them great. But overall, we got great field position here. Again, it's a shame we don't get this thing down in there quick enough. And I think, uh, uh, you know, you've got to play every snap as is, as if it's a, your last one. Up seven, going to the fourth quarter, and here Torn leaps over To get people. the first. Yeah. yeah, got the first down. The Raiders continue. They'll get points on this drive. Here's Curtsy for two more yards around the right side, and boy, those are tough yards. Tough yards, but he is a tough running back, and uh, Calvary Green's a tough running back. This is how you run. You get your shoulders downhill uh, and not run to the boundary. Uh, you got to eventually get them downhill so you can make moves. You cannot make moves going laterally. Drive stalls just outside the 10-yard line. Kelver, uh, rather, uh, Keegan Ray is called upon for a 29-yard field goal. It's good, and the Raiders up their lead to 10 at 19-9. to nine. Exactly. That was a big three points right here. Now they got to go back and see if they can't do something about two scores. So it's 19-9. to nine. We'll pick up Tennessee Tech's possession two possessions later. Uh, on a third and sixth play at the Tech 25, here's... People's looking for for Gale, they pick up the first down. We're not doing a good job with the inside back and the outside back of converging on the uh, short curl routes, and uh, we, we'll have to get better at that. It's over and over and over, and it's consistent. Here he fumbles the ball. We don't get it. They picked it up. But that's a sign of a team that's trying to come back, trying to win the football game. This is, you won't see every play, but this is a 17-play 79-yard drive they put together. Right, and it's a good drive for them, but it's also the clocks against them. Right. And that's what we're working against. We, they got to score twice. We're working clock and trying to make them work as hard as they possibly can and take as long as they can to score. Over the middle, there's the fullback Christian down to the Raider 23-yard line, and they hit for Gale and a good lick there. It's, you know, uh, we're hitting them. They're making plays. That's a sign of the Tech Middle Tennessee rivalry. There's going to be plays made here. We don't do a uh, really a good job. We got man coverage here, and we slacked off of him, and he threw the little old stop, slant, stop route. This is fourth down, and I thought they made a good call. Oh, they made an excellent call, but if you go back on our side of it, we got a responsibility that we have to do, and we didn't do that. Uh, but th that's our fault as, as coaches. We got to school them a little bit better. 19 to 16, you knew this was coming, the onside kick. Yeah, you know, and they got a little cute uh, with it. Uh, we had already prepared all week. The Tennessee Tech does things like this over the course of a 20-year period. Normally, people would kick it all the way across the field to give them time to get the 10 yards with the sprint. 
they tried to kick it on side, but we even told them before we went out they're coming back to it on their own side, and thank goodness we got the ball. And you're able to run the clock out, and that's the way you, you like to run those kind of plays oh, when yeah, you're running the yeah. clock out. Once they have no timeouts and you got the ball, uh, it's a tough feeling if you're on the defensive side and you can't stop the clock, and it's a great feeling if you're on the offensive side and all you got to do is kill it. So the Raiders win it by a score of 19 to 16 in the 74th meeting between the Raiders and Tennessee Tech. And after the game, a little ceremony was held down by the Raider locker room between Coach Donnelly and former Tech coach Jim Ragland. Just remember, don't call me to go fishing. I will promise you, I won't call you to go fishing. We'll play golf, though. We're supposed to take this in That's yours. Can I pick it up? When you want to know about local sports, Colonel, your news every day. Raiders win at Tennessee Tech 19 to 16. Also, Southeast Missouri and Eastern Illinois had quite a game 35 33. Eastern Illinois gets a two point win in Charleston, Illinois. Alabama A&M and Tennessee State in Nashville, 59 to 24. The Tigers get the win over Ron Cooper's ball club. And this week's opponent, Murray State, was a winner over Tennessee Martin in Murray, 47 to 35. A lot of points were scored yesterday in the league, and uh, that is the Daily News Journal scoreboard brought to you by the Daily News Journal. Find them on the World Wide Web at www.dnj.com. Coach, kind of put in perspective. Uh, uh, I guess mainly the thing you're concerned about the most is how your team has responded to a, an emotional roller coaster this week. Well, young people respond. Uh, you know, uh, they bounce back pretty quick. Uh, uh, we've explained all of that, and from now on out, Chip, you know that's over. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's over with. Our job is to get them prepared to play Murray. Their job is to prepare themselves to play Murray because we've got a chance. We're back at home. And all of that uh, hoopla of last week is over with, and it's right. time to get back to work. And I tell you, if there's anything, if history repeats itself, we've had two great games in the stadium. People are going to be missing out if they don't come out this week. Well, I hope we do a better job of coming out on the uh, uh, long end of it, uh, so to speak. But uh, overall, I think we're going to be playing perhaps one of the top two uh, football teams in our conference because, of, from what I understand, their quarterback is excellent. Well, congratulations on a great victory yesterday, and good luck this week. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, that'll wrap it up for us this week. For Coach Boots Donnelly, this is Chip Walters saying thanks for being with us, and we'll talk to you next Sunday. in a row now in the win column on homecoming. Well, you that's, know, that's good for you, for, for the alums. Oh, it is. It's great for them. And that's what you play this mm -hmm. football game for. The homecoming is for uh, the alumni to come back, to visit, to compare this football team to teams in the past. The ex-players come back and try to compare players that play position by position to, uh, to where they used to play it. And it's always good for homecoming. Yeah, we'll take a look at the first half of what was a great game for the Raiders as they took on Murray State right after this been really good performances by your ball club. Uh, they came back out on the big helmet on Saturday night and put, I'm telling you, 60 minutes together that we haven't seen all year. No, we haven't played uh, a, a complete full quarters uh, all year long, Chip, and we tried to emphasize that to our players, and, and they responded exceptionally well uh, here at homecoming. I was really pleased with the way we played on both sides of the ball, and I was also pleased with the way we Get played the kicking game. And really not that many plays in the kicking game uh, as we've seen in the past. You, one thing you had uh, talked about uh, several times was not getting off to a really good start. You did that last night, though. We did it last night, not only in the first half, but we also did it in the second half. And we've been a very poor second half football team. And I was pleased with where we played both sides of the ball, uh, opening of the ball game, and also uh, uh, at the second half. It looked like uh, from the, from the get-go, as we, as we watched the video from the very first possession, 
that uh, part of the plan was to keep the ball out of Murray's offense's hands and try to keep it for as long as you could. Well, we knew two things were going to take place. Murray is an extremely explosive football team offensively. And we were going to have to put some points on the board, and we were going to have to play it pretty loose and go on and do what we could do, but maintain the change and, and try to keep the clock on our side. And we were able to do that. I thought John Bobo and the offensive staff did an excellent job of calling and executing plays, but I was really pleased with the way the defense executed also. There's Torn Curtsy and then Kelverick Green with the football, and already in this drive, Wes has used three different receivers already. You know, I'm really pleased the way Wes is spreading it out, and everyone is catching the ball, and everyone is giving second effort and trying to get an extra yard here, an extra yard there. There's Celicio Sanford here. Uh, counts coming back to the freshman, Kendall Newsom. He's going to be an awfully good player. Uh, he makes a great move here. He catches the ball. He is a very, very competitive guy. The, the, the group that I was pleased with, Chip, I thought the offensive lineman really played well. Mm -hmm. I thought they came off the football and gave us some creases to run, and I thought they protected uh, West exceptionally well. Second and goal from the four, and we'll see this a couple of times, but Torn Curtsy uh, takes it into the end zone. Well, if he can get his pads turned downhill, he can make a lot of people miss, and he's a lot stronger running back than he gives you the impression that he is. He's not that big of a back, but he gets over his pads and he can run. And from the end zone, you can see you don't want to try to take him on one-on-one. -on -one. No, yeah, you go one-on-one -on -one with him, and you're going to lose that battle most of the time. You better be an exceptionally fine position uh, tackler because he is going to make some moves on it. So 17 plays after the kickoff. The Raiders are on top 17 or 7 to nothing. If you could score a 17-point touchdown, I guess that'd be okay. Well, now, Murray, now Murray has it. Well, you know, <laughs> this part of the game, it looked like it's going to end up being a shootout. You know, we take it 81 yards or whatever it was on our first possession for touchdown. They come right back and take it for the excellent quarterback, and I thought they executed exceptionally well. Hey, the receiver on the end of this play is named Cliff Branch. How about that for a name? Well, I tell you what, uh, the branches all the way across the country are pretty good football <laughs> players. You know. Here it is on third and five, and just a boy, great timing pass. It's a good, uh, a good post corner. We were in man coverage here, and he ran a good route, and the guy lays it. It's hard to defend that if the ball is thrown absolutely perfect. As far as long as the game was uh, in doubt, that was it for Murray's offense. Well, you know, we started right. We started playing a, a very sound defensively. After that, we gave them everything that they were going to throw on us was going to be short. And we gave him some of those and revolved back up. And then on out, it becomes our show. Nice return by Celicio Sanford, first and 10 on the 43. Here's Gary Davis catching a pass, the senior from Salina. Right, we need to get Gary a little bit more involved in the passing game and the short stuff because he can do something with it also. Kendall Newsom, what a catch. Great catch, got interference call there. Uh, I cannot say enough about the two young freshman uh, receivers that we're playing right now, Newsom. <laughs> and you can't see this completely, but take our word for it, an unbelievable right. catch down at the 34-yard uh, line, I or down West, inside the 10. I yeah. thought West was actually throwing it to another guy until he uh, flipped it out there. I thought he had great uh, composure when he threw the ball after he scrambled out and just found Newsom down through there. There's Curtsy down to the three-yard line, and uh, this drive continues. And on the first play of the second quarter, it's going to be Torn Curtsy uh, getting the call to the right side for his second touchdown of the game. We run a little sweep action here away from the wing back that goes in motion. And he finds a crease. We get a good kick out blocked by our fullback, and he finds a crease inside and puts it in for a 14 to 7 score. Now, okay, you're a defensive guy here. What do you do when this is coming at well, you? Well, you got to work him inside out, and uh, most defensive backs make this mistake. They try to get outside. And when you do that, you try to get him turned back in. And if we get anything sealed off inside, he has a crease. Great leg action. He's got tremendous speed. He's got great vision, and he can find the crew. 14 to 7, Middle Tennessee. Raiders with the football back once again. Not only does Torn Curtsy have it, this guy's not too bad himself. Biggest disappointment here, I did not realize that Kel Beck only ran five times. He is an excellent tailback. We've got to get him in the ball game, and he's got to run the football more than five times a game. Decisions by Wes <laughs> here. Good one. He picks up four yards. Out picks of up the four yards, and he's smart enough to get out of bounds here. And uh, just continue to move the ball down the field. You, you move the chains, and you keep the clock on your side any way you can. A third and 16, jailbreak to Kendall Newsom. It's an awfully good run. See, so you can tell this young man, he's got some vision, and he's got some feet about him. He's going to be a big, uh, strong receiver before, before he's out of here. That's a first down. And on first down, here's Torn Curtsy for 25. He can run, and, you know, I thought right there that he had a chance to take this ball all the way, but they cut him off, and he had no place to run once he got to the boundary. 
counts, looking downfield, finding the senior Matt Lowe out of Powell, Tennessee. He continues to catch tough balls. He continues to play hurt. And, you know, uh, he ended up with a cartilage in his rib uh, bruise yesterday, and but he continues to play. Hansford Johnson, watch the swivel of the hips right here. He's going to be a player, I'm telling you now. The young man, uh, although he is small in stature, he has got great feet. He's got great soft hands, and he's going to be able to do something later on. Torn curtsy, and you'll see this one again as uh, Torn goes airborne and uh, is still able to hang on to the football. Torn is one of those running backs that you look for. He has to have the ball in his hand quite a few times before he gets lathered up and gets excited. Now, he really gets excited about this contact right here. He likes it, and that's what a running back's all about. The harder you come at him, the harder he comes after you. This is a great run here and a great block. Uh, on the corner there to spring and right there in the corner of the end zone. So the Raiders uh, take a 21 to 7 lead to the locker room. And it's it's a good feel, uh, Chip. Now what we have to do, we have not been able to come out of the locker room second half playing with any intensity and any emotion. If you go back and look, we haven't played well in the third quarter. We came back in this game at homecoming all and we played well. 21 7 at the break. Middle Tennessee with the lead. We'll be back to uh, take a look at the second half plus a look at the Raider quarterback as we continue right after this. Bella's story is what some call it. Freshman quarterback Wes Counts grew up on the sidelines at MTSU. He attended practices, games, and camps held by the Blue Raiders. Wes loved coming out to the field where he could watch his heroes play in practice. Always wanted to be a part of this program because that's where my heroes were. By Wes hanging out at the field, he was able to get many tips from the players. Former quarterback Kelly Holcomb, who now plays in the NFL, was able to help Wes one-on-one. -on -one. I got to hang around a the wide receivers when I was younger, and then uh, Kelly Holcomb, he, he kind of let me hang around him during the summer, and we threw a lot and got to, he kind of taught me a few things, and it helped out. Being able to meet the players and being around college football helped Wes develop his own skills. Uh, being around here has uh, really taught me a lot about football. I got to go with the team the first time back when I was about eight years old, and got to learn a lot about football and learn about the program and be around some of the older players that are up on the walls upstairs and it, it's meant a lot to me. After redshirting his first year at MTSU, Wes entered the season as a third string quarterback. In the opening game against TSU, Wes got called on to lead the Raiders. With junior quarterback Judd Moore out with an injury, Counts has the position all to himself. Not everyone gets the chance to live out their dream, but freshman quarterback Wes Counts is getting his chance. I would like to prove some stuff to people that have said I couldn't do it and said I'm only here because of my mom and dad. And it it kind of has something to give me something to think about. After all of the hard work gone into Counts' career, things couldn't have worked out better for him. But there is one thing that Wes would like to see. We get a few wins and it'll, it'll be really a Cinderella story. For the Boots Donnelly Show, I'm Marcy Anderson. Well, Coach, Wes mentioned in the, in the package there that, uh, that he wanted to prove to a lot of people that he did belong. And uh, I guess that's a natural reaction for him, but uh, you were, you, you're not going to waste a scholarship on anybody who can't play football. Chip, we wouldn't waste a scholarship on my brother's son uh, if he could not play. And uh, I felt all along that Wes Counts loved this university, had been around this university all his life because of his mother and father being as close to us and to me personally. Uh, but we explained that to, uh, to Wes uh, when we signed him. You're going to hear these comments, but you're going out to play because we thought he had some talent. He's got feet, and he's got some vision about him, and he's proven that right now. We're really pleased to have him. I tell you, he's doing a great job as a redshirt freshman. Well, it was homecoming week on the MTSU campus. All kinds of activities. We've got the sights and sounds for you, including a group that hit the golf course on Thursday. It was a reunion of the 1965 MTSU National Championship golf team. Three of the members were there, and they did miss one of their guys, uh, was Larry Gilbert, who passed away earlier this year. The first nine holes that we had played in the, in the tournament, and Larry, although was a, became an outstanding player, he wasn't that good in college. He was as good as the rest of us, but not, we all played about the same, and uh, Coach Patty came up to me and told me that Larry had shot a 31 on the first nine holes. And I said, do what? 31? No way this guy can shoot a 31. Of course, he went ahead and won the golf tournament, and from that point forward, he was an outstanding player. Where'd he go? Right down the middle. Right, right down the, the wing. wing.
Now, I'm not sleeping all week. I'm going on cappuccino and coffee. Mr. Peterson, it's like this. There's questionable viscosity. Racers and coach, not only do you have a 21-7 lead, you guys have complete control of this football game. At the half, we have complete control. Uh, but in the past, we've had some control, mm -hmm. and we let it get away in the third quarter. So we've strongly tried to get into our uh, players' head. We need to come out here and play strong in the third quarter and put a lot of doubt in there. Some of the halftime numbers show you with over almost 100 yards more in total offense. And uh, no turnovers to that point, and that's something that's been key. You played mistake-free yeah. football most of the year. I cannot say enough about this football team, uh, what they've been able to overcome, how far they've come back. They're really playing well right now. Yeah. Defensively, particularly, they played exceptionally well for the last three weeks. There's uh, first and second down, just a couple of yards for Justin Bivens on each carry. On third, third down, Fuente looks downfield, good coverage, and a drop ball. It forces a fourth down, so three and out on Murray's first possession exactly. in the second and that's half. That's what we really needed. And what we wanted is to come back with the possession and get us to a three first downs. We don't have to put points on the board, but we have to control the first five minutes of the second half. You did get a couple of first downs, uh, but a turnover gave it to Murray State. We'll show the tail end of Murray's possession. On a third and 11, they hit Wilbert Smith to force a fourth and one. And well, you know, they throw a screen here, and we're in, uh, we're in a deal, different defensive look that I think bothered them uh, all night long. They hadn't seen us in it before. And they throw a little screen out there, and now they've got fourth and one here. Fourth and one, and zilch. They get nothing. Not a, you know, nothing. We get a lot of uh, silver hats on the football, and we get a lot of people coming to the football. And that's the name of the game on defense. You do. The more hats you put on people, the more... Uh, there it is again, and I'll tell you... Uh, Oh, it's this a great stick. I think Paul was the first one that sticks him inside. And I think Whitehead's in on there. Yeah, everybody's, everybody's in on there. And uh, that's something this this uh, this group has made a name for itself on not giving up short yardage. Well, they're starting to believe in themselves. Uh, and I even thought we had a couple of shots earlier on a couple of short yardage uh, where I thought the spot was a little bit. Uh, of course, we always think that, too. You know? <laughs> There's Torn Curtsy for three yards. This is a touchdown drive coming up for the Raiders. Here counts, uh, flushed out of the pocket, picks up 18. This is what the young man can do. This is what the young man can do in high school. So there should not be any doubt whether he's got the ability to play on the college level or not. Well, let's watch uh, as Counts goes to work with his arm here as the Raiders have it third and 17 at their own 32. Counts looking downfield, and he finds Kendall Newsom. It's amazing how many third and longs we've picked up here in the last couple of weeks. Uh, this is a great throw, great catch, and great run for the sticks, and uh, he was able to pick it up. Third down and 10 now at the 39-yard line. The Raiders called a timeout, talked things over, and said, uh, hey, let's throw it back to that 12. He's hot. <laughs> You know, we, we throw a little jailbreak right here, and he picks it up again. I wish he would tuck that ball away a little bit better. But uh, then again, you know, what a run right here. This is for a true freshman coming right out of high school. I tell you, you've had some good receivers here. Uh, I mean, you look back at the Corey Simpsons and uh, Steve Darks and, and those guys, and you'll, we're going to see this touchdown again, and, and you'll just see just how shifty he can be. And, and not only that, for a freshman, he's got some strength about him. He was one of the highly recruited athletes out of Atlanta. Uh, he played for Ron Sieber. He also played for us at Austin P. who is a head coach at Columbia High School in Atlanta. And uh, this young man has got a lot of talent now. There he is, Kendall Newson out of Decatur, Georgia. And the Raiders, who, as we see, uh, uh, Keegan Ray with the extra point. Keegan was not a big factor in the game last night, but you don't want him to be necessarily. No, no, we don't. He did we, everything right. We want Keegan to do nothing but kick extra points. And uh, we don't like a lot of field goals and everything else. But uh, so far, we're controlling the football game. 28-7 is the score. Middle Tennessee uh, putting it on Murray State this Saturday night. Good crowd at the stadium for homecoming. 18,000 the listed attendance. And here, sacked is Fuente. And uh, leading uh, the charge is Jeff Thomas. Jeff Thomas has improved so much uh, as a defensive outside end. 
he was inside as a tackle, and we've moved him back outside, and the young man is really playing well. So here on a fourth, uh, on, a, on a fourth down, they punt. Middle Tennessee gets the football back. Torn curtsy rushes for five yards, and as the third quarter comes to a close, football's for everybody, and the Raiders lead it by a score of 28 to 7. Middle Tennessee still with it. Here's counts completing to Hurd for seven yards. I thought Trey Hurd uh, played, except I thought all of our receivers played well, and I thought that West found different receivers and laid it in their hands. Well, this is something for everybody down the schedule to think about. Well, this is the difference between uh, Coach Bobo and myself. Uh, we got it 28 to 7. Uh, we're backed up. He makes this call, and it basically took him completely out of the football game. I thought it was an awful, awful gutsy call on uh, Coach Bobo. Would I have made it? I don't think so, as old as I am. You know, I would have played 28-7, to 7, but that's where he made the call. Th that play is not something that uh, has not been in your playbook for years and years, but not necessarily at that point on the field. Well, you know, I guess that's the difference between uh, young football coaches. <laughs> Uh, than old football coaches. I thought it was, uh, at the time, I just turned to Coach uh, Robbins and started laughing because I would have never uh, made that call. And uh, Coach Bobo made it in a particular death that he made. And I thought it was a good throw. Uh, and it really took him completely out of the game when that happened. Hansford Johnson uh, got the touchdown. He had one call back at Tennessee Tech. It's now 35-7. to After an interception, uh, Murray State brings it down the field. And Wilbert Smith, their starter from a year ago, ends up uh, scoring the touchdown to make the final score uh, 35 to 14. And look, here come some guys. Let's see, here are the culprits. That uh, Thank goodness. Paldo and uh, what, Whitehead? Whitehead, good. I want to know who that was. <laughs> you know? Thank goodness they only caught me on the right back, you know, because uh, I cannot stand anything cold, and boy, that stuff is cold. <laughs> <laughs> 35 to 14 is the final score. Middle Tennessee evens the record now at 3 and 3 and goes to 3-1 and one in the Ohio Valley Conference. That's the most important thing. We'll take a break and be back to wrap things up right after this. Well, Tennessee gets a 35-14 win over the Murray State Racers. First time in three years that the middle has gotten that victory, and it was a sweet one. Southeast Missouri wins on the road at Tennessee Tech 29-24. SEMO having a good year. For Samford uh, at home defeated Tennessee Martin by a score of 24-13. And in uh, Richmond, Kentucky, kind of a shocker, Tennessee State uh, upends the Eastern Kentucky Colonels by a score of 31 to 21. And Eastern Illinois had the weekend off. And that is a look at the Daily News Journal now in its 150th year in publication. Find them on the World Wide Web at www.dnj.com. Big win, open week now. Uh, it's, it's time for a little rest. Well, it is. We've played, uh, you know, we've played hard uh, six weeks now, and it's time for us to take a day off. We'll take Sunday and Monday off. Uh, we'll come back. We'll practice Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and we'll give them uh, Friday, and we'll give them Saturday off and get back uh, in here on Sunday to start work for Eastern Illinois. One more home game, then three on the road. Are you time to gear up for this last uh, little drive here? Well, it is. You know, the season's basically going to two halves, and we're in the second part of it right now. What we have to do now, because the cards are really stacked against us. You know, we get one more home game, then the, the rest of them on the road, and it's tough to do that. What we have to do is really play well our last home game. Well, great victory on Saturday, and uh, enjoy the week off, and we'll see you in two weeks. Thank you, Chip. All right, next home game for the Raiders is on the 24th, and game time 6 o'clock at uh, MTSU's Horace Jones Field. For Coach Boots Donnelly, this is Chip Walter saying thanks for being with us, and we'll see you in a couple of weeks. has and uh, he's been on a tear he had uh, 16 catches in four games here a fumble Jeff Thomas uh, with the scoop. Up. you know they don't leave the ball on the ground very often matter of fact they lead the conference here and uh, Jeff picks this one up and takes it down and unfortunately hits his head on the turf and knocks him out for a while uh, he's out right there he's uh you know, he's chilled right there. There's no question about that, but it was a great play for him. And we'll see uh, the young man from Bluntsville, Alabama, get up, get a little uh, high five from Trey Hurd. Uh, wanted to know the number of that truck, but the Raiders have the football, and, and, and Jeff came back and played in the game, even oh, yeah. with a concussion. Yeah, he was okay. You know, he got, uh, he got knocked around there on the turf a little bit, and uh, that will occasionally happen. Drive stalls. Keegan Ray kicks a 40-yard field goal. You got the lead now, 10-7.
And, you know, it's going to be a nip and tuck game. It's going to be tough all, uh, all the way through the game. And, again, whoever makes the big plays at the end is going to win this game. There's Wes Stevens blocking the punt. He was, uh, he was able. We were actually in a cautious situation where we were uh, midfield and on. He got his hands on the ball. Here's something that is really disturbing right here. We've got, uh, got to show a lot more composure and just take our time and get the ball and get six instead of two. That's twice this year that that's happened, and, and you, you think about the well, number of points and its differences in ball games. You know, it goes back to, uh, as I said earlier, uh, we have to teach better, and, and we're not teaching very well as a, as a staff, and uh, we're not putting the discipline in them and, and putting the confidence in our players to take their time and just do what they're supposed to do and, and make plays. So the Raiders get it back after the safety on the free kick. There's uh, Torn Curtsy uh, rushing for 18 yards. And here, uh, Curtsy again, he'll go 26 on this one. You know, he's, got, he's, a, he's a good cutback runner. He has great vision, and we get great blocking right there to get him to take it back into the end zone. And, and right now, we got the game in our hands. Uh, we have momentum on our side. We're doing some things that we want to do, but the whole key is that we continue to let them run the football, and when we had to make big plays, we didn't make them. We went for two here and came off of it with a uh, bootleg action with our backside tight end blocking down. It was good to see you. That play well executed. And Daniel, also. Daniel Calvo, the senior, gets in the score in college. Senior, right? Exactly. But Your seniors again, normally play good on senior night. You know, boy, you know, you should play good mm -hmm. on senior night. But unfortunately, we gave a game away that we shouldn't have given away uh, for the seniors, also for their parents. And it was a, it was a costly game for us. Here before the half, uh, Eastern Illinois on the move. There's uh, uh, passing complete to Phil Taylor and. Uh, I'm really impressed with the quarterback, Chip. Uh, this right here is a no play. Uh, there's no reason for this play to, uh, to take effect. You know, uh, we blew the coverage, and they toss it into the back of the end zone for a touchdown. And again, I go right back to the same thing. No matter what we say all the way through this ball game, uh, we did not prepare our football team well enough. So 20 to 7 to 20 to 14 now. The uh, Raiders still have the lead as they go to the locker room. And we'll be back to meet one of the Raiders seniors and talk to some former Blue Raiders as we continue right after this. Marcy Anderson introduces us to Blue Raiders senior Matt Lowe. As a football player going into your senior year, you tend to set personal goals. And having to play hurt is not one of them. Senior receiver Matt Lowe has had to play with injury since the beginning of the season, but hasn't missed a beat. Going into this weekend's game against Eastern Illinois, Lowe is ranked third on the all-time receiving list at MTSU. A personal goal for him would be to break the record before he finishes his career. It wasn't going to be an easy task, and as the season goes on, it's had its struggles. And, you know, whether I, I'll be able to accomplish that, I don't know. But if I do, that's great. If I don't, then, you know, I've given it a good shot. Some may think that breaking the record is all that's on Lowe's mind, but when he's out on the field, it's all about the team and winning. That's something you think about on Sunday mornings when you're reading the paper. When you go into a game, you've got one thing, and that's go out there and make plays for myself and the 10 other people on the field. Hard work and perseverance was a key to Matt's success, but it's his confidence that got him where he is today. A lot of times, players are criticized because they're cocky. Well, in order to play this game at a high level, you have to be confident, and there's a big difference between the two, but every time you walk out there, you've got to think that you're better than the other player over there. If you don't, you're already beat. Lowe has reminded many people of past MTSU players, such as Ray powell Hagee. Though surprisingly, Lowe tells us the one person the other players say he's like is Coach Donnelly. Maybe it's because, uh, in a way, he's a wild spirit. He does his own things, and he's very vocal, and he's going to shoot you straight. If he likes you, he's going to tell you. If he doesn't, he's going to tell you. <laughs> and that's the way he is, and in a lot of ways, I'm the same way. If, if I have a problem with somebody, I'm going to be up front with them and tell them. If I like them, I'm going to help them any way I can. Lowe, a physical education major, has not only had a great career at MTSU, but will leave here with much more. Without a doubt. Uh, this program has been great for me. It's given me an opportunity to get a college education, and it's given me an opportunity to you know, expand my life that I wouldn't have gotten in Powell, Tennessee. Lowe has been very lucky for the support he's received from his parents. He can always look up in the stands and know that they are there. My mom and dad have never missed a game since I've been playing here. They flew for the first time when I played at Texas A&M my freshman year. They drove 14 some odd hours to Louisiana Tech. They've driven everywhere, and they're the best thing in the world. I mean, I've got 15, 16 people coming to every home game that I have here, and, uh, you know, they're the best parents in the world. Overall, Matt Lowe will be remembered as a strong player and a hard worker. For four years, he's given his best to MTSU. So will we see him any time in the future? 
I don't have any doubt in the world that I'll be back here every chance I get. This place has been great to me, and the sport's been great to me. For the Boots Donnelly Show, I'm Marcy Anderson. Coach Matt Lowe is one of those guys who, he's, a, he's not only is he a coach's player, he's a player's player. Well, Matt likes to play. Uh, the confident level that uh, Matt brings into the game uh, gives him an opportunity to play. Matt does not have the foot quickness uh, and the speed of other receivers and all, but Matt catches hard balls. He catches tough balls in the middle. He just enjoys playing, and it's all attitude. Matt knows what his limitations are, but he also knows he's a tremendous contributor to this football program. And he's also on every special team you got. Has you know, been for four years. That's confidence in yeah. a player. Uh, we know that Matt will do the best job that he can possibly do every snap that he's out there. Uh, that's the reason he's on all of these. Uh, you, you get a trust in a young man, and you're playing. Um, and that's what every player needs to do is to build that trust that I will do the best job that I can possibly do every time I'm out there, and that's a Matt Lowe. Yeah, Matt Lowe's a great one, and thanks, Marcy, for the look at Matt's uh, career here at Middle. Changing gears just a little bit, Coach, a lot of your former players came back last night. Uh, three in particular that we had on the field before the game uh, surprised the heck out of you, Marty Carter, Don Griffin, and Kelly Holcomb. Well, you know, uh, all three of them, uh, uh, you know, Don was one of the all-time great players here, and he's also had a great year in pro ball. And Kelly's still in pro ball there with uh, uh, Indianapolis Colts and also Marty uh, with Chicago Bears, and he was in town, and he's playing uh, today. Uh, he's the one that surprised me because uh, <laughs> he's got a game, and when he came up to me uh, right before the game, it was really good to see him. Well, I want to let you in on a secret. I've known it for a couple of days. I didn't want to let you in on it. Anyway, we had a chance to talk to those three guys up in the president suite, and here's the way it went. And I know if it wasn't been, if it wouldn't have been for Coach Donnelly that uh, you know with the troubles I had with the first couple of years being at Tampa, then I don't know if I'd still be where I am today if it weren't not for him. He's been here a long time, and um, you know. I figured if he's planning his own retirement, he knows when it's ready. So he knows he's ready to step down, and um, he's done a great job. It's a beautiful stadium here. Um, he's leaving with a winning tradition. You know, a lot of ex-players that are, that are proud they, that they came here to be a Blue Raider also. He really cares about the players, and I think the players really understand that, especially once they leave. And, and really start to think back and all the life situation that's, that Coach Donnelly was talking about on the field, you know, it's coming true and it's all happening. But the discipline is a uh, thing that really uh, carries over and, and, and helped me out a lot. Well, Mr. Peters, the football back to start the second half and have an opportunity to take control of the game right there. Well, you know, and we have not started second halves very well. Uh, a chip and uh, that's always been a concern of mine and we do have the football and we are playing a quality football team that does not make a lot of mistakes and we need to control it uh, after we get it for the second half. Hey the band spelled out boots at halftime. How about that? A little tribute to you on your final home game in the stadium and uh, after 20 years I guess you deserve to have your name spelled out. Well I know I appreciate it. Uh, it's been a good 20 years uh, playing on this turf here. Uh, we've had some great games and we've also had some terrible disappointing games. Probably none worse than this one. What a catch though by Sully to get things going in the second yeah, he half. He gets it yeah. going. Yeah, he bobbles it at first but he looks it all the way in and he takes it in. Uh, uh, going across the middle like that, that takes a lot of dedication and a lot of concentration here. This is a Raiders scoring drive as Hansford Johnson makes the catch. We're about midway through the second or through the third quarter because neither team got anything going early. Right. And I thought it was a great catch by him. And uh, again, we continue to throw the little short uh, balls at it because they gave them to us. And here you talk about a playmaker. He's going to be a good player. Uh, both of our freshman receivers are really going to be uh, good as soon as they get uh, get some age on them, get some bark on them, and get a lot stronger in the weight room. Kendall Newson goes 36 yards for the touchdown. We'll see it again on the replay. And, uh, you know, to be as big as he is, he really has good feet and, 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 and shifts his body around. Well, I keep saying, uh, again, his attitude is what dictates uh, what type player that he's going to be down the road. He enjoys competition. He enjoys playing. And he does everything that we asked him to do. The only thing he needs is more and more catches and more playing time. And you're going to read about it for a long time. 26 to 14 is the score. And uh, these guys were having to do a lot of push ups on Saturday night. Eastern Illinois on the next possession will pick it up after a first down. Here at second and 10 at your 34. You know, they throw the little delay up under our linebackers and all, and we have had problems with it all year long, Chip. 
And here is Wayne Brown, 29 yards. Very poor tackling. Uh, heads are down. We don't see what's going on. And a young man just takes it in the end zone. Uh, we started the ball game out knowing if we don't stop the run and we don't make them throw the football, then they can get to do both. And consequently, they did both, particularly in the second half. They didn't do that much first half, but they did an awful lot to us in the second half. Winding down the third quarter, the Raiders go to Torn Curtsy for three yards. Here on third and seven, West Counts pulls it down and runs for nine and a first down. It's a big first down right here. It gets us into the fourth quarter, basically with the ball in our hands and the lead. 26-21, you're up five, and we head to the fourth period of play. And we'll see a big play right off the bat as West Counts will hit Salicio Sanford for 35 yards all the way down to the Eastern Illinois 11. Gives him a good what a throw. Catch, it's Watch a little this. bit on the outside. Salice turns around and makes a great catch, a uh, tremendous catch. This is what should have given us all of the momentum we needed to put the ball in the end zone. So the Raiders have it first and 10 at the 11. Calvert Green is in there now at tailback, and he will take it for one yard, and uh, those big defensive linemen kind of clog things up. Well, when you get when you have it down there, Chip, you can't be denied. You have to go and do something with it, and consequently, we had to settle for a field goal, and uh, that right there started really uh, concerning. Uh, I was concerned about it because we're settling for field goals, and I didn't think we'd be able to keep them out of the end zone. What a run by Curtsy. A great run again. Uh, needs to control the ball when he gets into the crowd. They strip it. We were fortunate enough to get it back. And again, we got it down. Uh, all we got to do is do something with it, and, and we can get this game over with. So up eight, a chance to put a, a lock on it here. West counts on a quarterback draw. Runs a quarterback draw. Uh, picks up another big first down. Got everything that we want. You know, We got it down on about the two. But unfortunately, we don't finish the job. We missed a kick-out block there. Uh, we can get it in. Uh, I don't know. Is he or isn't he? You know, uh, somebody's got to make, you know, I don't know. Uh, but here's the thing that is so depressing right there. You got six inches or so and you cannot score on a quarterback steep. Don't deserve to win the football game, Chip. That's it. So there's uh, Keegan Ray with the field goal. It's 32-21, minute 25 to go. This is uh, the bad thing. We go, uh, go into a prevent look. Uh, we got five under people, we got three deep, and they keep throwing the seams, and we never make a break. We never make a break. Back and forth, back and forth. And this is what I mean. You know, we have some limitations physically, but if we do not coach them correctly, then you, know, you, you, can't, lay it on, uh, you can't lay it on your players. Uh, just uh, it's a great catch there on the boundary. We leave the boundary uh, free, and a young quarterback finds it. Uh, excellent player. That's, you know, that's coaching. That's not, uh, that's not our players. That's all coaching. 32-27, and you knew this was coming. Yeah, and we got to play. Uh, all we got to do is catch it. Uh, Sleece has got a chance to just handle the ball, and we miss it. That's the reason the ball is oblong instead of round. It bounces funny, and they get it, and they just walk it down. Uh, again, here comes the crease. Uh, you know, we got three deep. Can't have it any better. We got five under. Uh, and it's play after play after play. You lose Cedric Stegall, you'd already lost Daryl Love, and now you finish with the, some young guys up there. There is Wayne Brown. Uh, they have about 30 seconds to go in the game, and they got plenty of time to run or throw, and they just crease us with the run. And we had, had the timeout, and we told them that they want to run the football. And they had one timeout left. They needed to use it. Unfortunately, we didn't make them do that. Here's the second and goal play. Almost a pick, almost a touchdown. And it's also a very, very poor uh, uh, play defensively. We lose the containment on the outside because of the defensive call, and we don't have anybody come off the block and revolve to it. You know, we got the play made there. We run through the block, and everybody else gets to the ball. But, um, you know, that's what makes the game so great, Chip. It's never over until uh, the final horn. And you and, got uh, one last shot. And, uh, and this is a Hail Mary here. And, don't really have a, a lot of shock there because we gave them the football game, uh, just simply gave it away. Uh, we gave the Eastern game away and we gave this game away, and that goes right back to coaching uh, to instill the, the confidence in a player to make a play and also to instill the, the type scheme that you want in, and to put the discipline in them to, uh, to do what is necessary to do to make plays, and we, we're just not doing that. So the final score is Eastern Illinois 35, Middle Tennessee 32. We'll be back to wrap things up with Coach Donnelly as we continue right after this. Daily News Journal, your news every day. There you see the final score is Eastern Illinois defeats the Raiders 35-32. Eastern Kentucky and Tennessee Tech played a four-overtime game in Cookville, 
and uh, Tennessee Tech gets the win 31 to 29. Southwest Missouri at home defeats Southeast Missouri 45 to 10. Raiders go to SEMO this week. And uh, UT Martin played at Tennessee State 76 to nothing. The Tigers were winners over the Skyhawks at Hale Stadium on homecoming for Tennessee State. And that's your Daily News Journal scoreboard brought to you by the DNJ. Find them on the World Wide Web at www.dnj.com. Coach, this is one that uh, we talked about it after Eastern Kentucky that that one was going to hang on the team for a while. This would seem the same kind of stunner. Well, you know, I hope it hangs on them, uh, Chip. You know, I'm not one of these uh, believers that, hey, it's over. Uh, forget it. Go on about your business. Uh, I can't buy that type philosophy. Uh, we gave the game away. We gave it away because we're not, uh, we're not coaching them well enough, we're not teaching them well enough, and we're not demanding that they do exactly what we want done. Uh, and consequently, it's not on the player's end of it, it's on our end of it. And that's what's so disappointing is that uh, uh, we can't seem to get these uh, football players to understand that every play is so important that you do the best that you possibly can on each play, and we're not we're not being able to get that out of them. Now a road trip to SEMO. Tough trip. Uh, extremely tough trip now, but we also got three. Uh, our last three is on the road. It's always tough to play on the road. But then again, uh, this is what the game teaches you. If you got some character, you'll come back. Uh, you'll fight like crazy, but you still never forget this. But mm -hmm. you fight like crazy. And you go back and you prove that you are man enough to, uh, to rebound and, and uh, and win football games, and we'll have to wait and find that out. All right. Thanks a lot, Coach. Thank you. For Coach Boots Donnelly, this is Chip Walter saying thanks for being with us, and we'll see you next week. Florida. Well, it's always a struggle up there uh, for whatever reason, Chip, and we're very fortunate to come out with this win. Uh, after last week's loss, I uh, had an extremely hard time getting not only the uh, players back up to play this one, but also the coaching staff. I'll tell you, when you go to Cape Girardeau, it's a game that's always filled with big plays, and you'll see a lot of those as we continue with our first half highlights right after this. The Boots Donnelly Show, brought to you by Bill Hurd's MTSU campus, the Raiders in Southeast Missouri, and Coach, there has been a lot made of of your retirement, but I want to mention as we get started today, and you're going to see some video, L.V. McGinney, Jack Hall, Ken Pack, and Bobby Bird, for the officials who were in yesterday's crew, they're going out after 25 years together, and uh, Bobby Bird said he would love at the end of the game to come over and just give you a kiss on the lips because he's heard enough out of you already. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I didn't realize that all four of them were, were retiring. You know, they've been uh, great officials in our conference for many, many years, and I didn't realize that all four of them have been in it for 25 years. Yeah, and uh, most of the time you hear negative things about those guys, but they're always easy to talk to on the sidelines and before the game. Here we go. Southeast Missouri uh, takes the kickoff, and really they do nothing offensively. Really surprised, uh, really surprised us. That came, they came out with no back set. Uh, we really felt that they would run the ball as a turned out that's what they did against us but uh, why they came out with this type formation early I don't know here uh, Bruni he is their their quarterback and, and uh, he is a he's a guy much like West Count's hometown guy who uh, redshirted a year ago and now he's in there won the starting job and I think they really like him uh, you know he's had some poise for a redshirt freshman but uh, I think they're gonna stick with it and you know they run three downs and uh, have to punt the ball and we have it now Celicio Sanford takes the kick, and now the Raiders have it. Here's Torn Curtsy, and uh, early on, it looked like he was going to have a good day. Well, you know, uh, Torn, he tries to run the sweep here, and the backside catches up with him. Big second down play coming up. Yeah, they, they try to jump a, a little flare bubble uh, screen that we run quite often, and, and evidently both their backs got confused, and both of them took off after him that low. He ran the bubble, and... Uh, you know, left, left uh, uh, Newsom wide open for a big touchdown right there early in the game. I really didn't know what happened in the second day until I saw the tape. 56 yards on the catch and run by Kendall Newsom, and West Counts was off and running to a good day as the Raiders had a 7 0 lead just three minutes into the game. And as uh, things worked out, did it, did it almost come too easy early? Well, you know, I thought we really needed something good to happen to us because we were so flat going into the ball game. We needed some. Uh, some kind of luck uh, to take place to get us jacked up a little bit but as it worked out uh, i don't know if it came too early because it was more of a blustered uh, play on their part 
Nine starters back on the offensive unit for Southeast from a year ago, including the fullback uh, and the tailback. You know, they've got a good running game. Uh, both their backs are big. Both of them are extremely strong uh, running backs. And the way we play, we did not do a great deal defensively. And uh, you can see them just running right through arms. If you don't put pads on these guys and run your feet and arm wrap them, uh, they just keep on running through. And there's Corey Williams, and he had a big day. He's a good back. Uh, he just got back. Uh, he had dislocated an elbow about four weeks ago or so, and they just got him back uh, healthy, but he is an excellent running back. There are seven yards down to the Middle Tennessee three, and here on a, a carry is the fullback Benson, and he uh, carries for a loss. It will be the quarterback, Bruni, who will take it in for the touchdown. And we should have him here. We got him from the backside, but we just don't close quick enough, and we don't arm wrap him and keep him out of there. And, He's a big old strong kid, and uh, he was able to fall into the end zone. So 7-7, seven, seven, and that's the story after one quarter as uh, Trooper Don Nicholson looks on. We move to the second quarter. Raiders with the football. There's Matt Lowe. And there's a little bubble that I was speaking of. Then they started laying off of it and playing it, uh, and we were still able to pick up five or six yards, and that's what it's designed to do. It's not a home run ball. Unfortunate yeah. here as uh, Torn Curtsy loses the football. Well, you know, we carry a little loose sometimes, uh, particularly when you catch something and you try to turn up field. You don't have quite enough time to get it tucked away before a linebacker converges on it. But your defense will rise to the occasion even after uh, Southeast uh, gets a first down. They'll pretty much shut them down here. Well, you know, we came here. Uh, Scotty Brown came in from the inside linebacker. But again, if you'll notice, every time we hit these big, strong running backs, they keep dragging us for three or four yards. And we're going to have to start running our feet and bring those people back. Watch Scotty Brown, number 41. He had 21 tackles uh, officially on Saturday. And he and uh, Jeff Thomas there both did a good job there. Jeff is really starting to play awfully well for us. The 42-yard uh, field goal attempt by Nick Reggio is no good, and uh, the game remains tied at 7. Middle Tennessee with the football. You get in position on a great catch by Kendall Newsom. You know, if you throw it close to Kendall, he's going to catch the football. He makes great effort. He enjoys playing, and you know, I've said it numerous times. If this young man stays healthy and stays in the weight room, he's going to be awfully good. That gave Keegan Ray a shot at a 49-yarder that he missed wide to the uh, left side. Well, the only positive we can say about that is he did miss it on the side that he should miss it on, and he just simply is, is not getting himself in position to make that kick. Uh, make a kick. So with 5.40 to go in the half, Southeast Missouri takes over. Here's the tailback Williams, and he breaks off a big run down the left side. Yeah, it's missed tackle after missed tackle after missed tackle uh, by inside backers, and we're going to have to improve that uh, if we're going to be able to do anything. Williams there again, uh, gets some inside the 35, and here on the option, they showed that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, outside backer's supposed to have the pitch. He takes the quarterback, and, uh, you know, we had some problems without... Uh, Without our linebackers in there making the calls, we couldn't get the checks and we couldn't get the calls correctly. That forces Southeast into a field goal position, and they hit it from 38 yards away. And, and right now take a 10-7 lead. You know, and, and that's <coughs> what we're going into half. Uh, this year's second time only this year that we've been behind at the half, and we still are not uh, motivated. We're, start up, we're not up to this game at all. You have a chance uh, before the half to get some points, and there, uh, Torn Curtsy gets it down to the 29. Time running out. Keegan Ray's field goal. This one is missed wide to the right side. Well, basically the same way. Uh, both of them missed on the left side, and we had a shot there. And I thought we did a good job of bringing the ball back right before the half to get this thing tied up, but we missed the field goal. So it's 10 to 7 at the half. Middle Tennessee trailing Southeast Missouri. We'll meet a couple of the Raiders seniors and continue on our program right after this. Earlier this season, you met Senator Matt Norwood. Today, Mary Beth Harper will introduce you to the guys to his left and right. Their guards Conrad Call and Andrew McDonald. As Blue Raiders seniors Andrew McDonald and Conrad Call prepare to wrap up yet another football season, their time spent at MTSU will never be forgotten. Well, since uh, Conrad's been here five years, he's pretty much shown me the ropes and shown me how everything goes on around here. And I follow in his football footsteps, and uh, basically he's been a leader on the O line for us. I don't think Andrew's giving me too much credit. He's the, I think he's the best player on our offensive line. He's been, uh, he came in here and he's started ever since he's been here after he got redshirted. And, uh, we, I think we've gelled together, especially on the inside three, because, you know, we're pretty good friends and joke around together and just work hard together. Andrew and Conrad share the same dorm room and have even lived in the same state. Both are from...